Good evening, everyone, and welcome into the New River Network's coverage of Oak Hill High School football from the campus of Oak Hill High School here at John Peter Stadium. It is homecoming as the Oak Hill Red Devils return home to face the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers. Lucas Berry alongside Chris Rader here with you. Chris, great to be back with your homecoming. Yeah, Lucas, it seems like we uh, haven't broadcast an Oak Hill game forever. In the time since we broadcast the last Oak Hill game, Oak Hill's won two games. Darren's been to Europe, and my daughter started driving. So I don't know if it's been three weeks or three years <laughs> since we uh, did an Oak Hill game, but I feel like I'm in an episode of Quantum Leap, so I'm glad to be back with you. As long as we don't have Scott back in the showing up, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> right. That's who I feel like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's get right down to business. Oak Hill comes in here ranked number 11 in the state. They carry a 5-1 and one, and five and one record in this game. They're scoring on average 27.3 points a game, giving out 17.6, and this is a really big game for the Red Devils after this year get Bluefield Woodrow and University to end the year. This almost feels like a gotta have a game for Oakville, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree. Oak Hill comes in tonight ranked 11th in the latest WVSSAC ranking. So, I mean, they have uh, they're right in the mix for a playoff spot, but to your point, and not that we're looking ahead, but I think Buck is going to give them a really good game, but if you look on paper, this is probably the most winnable game left on the schedule, and then it does pick up a little bit in the last three So homecoming, home, it's another chance to get a triple-A win. And if you get to the sixth win, you know, you guarantee a a winning season. And I would think that would be uh, definitely considered a success in Coach Marion's first season. It would absolutely be. It would – they went 5-5 and last year. It would would increase the win total by one. And you've still got several games left. This is a great chance for Oak Hill to – advance their record and get get uh, further towards a playoff berth for Buchanan Upshur. They come in here two and five, and it's pretty much the exact opposite of what Oak Hill is doing. Buchanan Upshur is scoring 17.7 points a game. They're giving up 30 and a half. In their last game, they lost 20 to 17 at Lewis County. So this is a team that has played some tough games, but here's the thing. It's a tough game. You lose close. You feel like maybe this team could be capable of uh, hanging around and maybe at the end, who knows? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They have one common opponent, which is Ripley, and Buck Cannon took care of business against Ripley much more than Oak Hill did. That, that was one of the games that we missed while, uh, while Oak Hill was on the road. They beat Ripley 13-10, to 10, and frankly, I think that was a game that a lot of people thought Oak Hill would win a lot more handily than that. I think when Buck Cannon beat them, you probably have the score in front of something like 42-3. to 3, that, Buck Cannon really took, took care of business against Ripley. So that's the one common opponent. Buck Hannon is going to come in here tonight, and they're huge. And if you're watching the game tonight, I want you to keep an eye on three guys for Buck Hannon on the offensive line. Number 63, Hunter Tenney. Number 74, Darren Daugherty. And number 79, Ryan Kelly. I'm going to give you their heights and weights here. Hunter is 6'4", 275. Darren Daugherty is 6'2", 324. And Ryan Kelly, number 79, is 6'7". 349. So Buck Cannon likes to play the power game. They are, and I'll talk to Rob Long yesterday before the uh, yesterday before the game, and he told me he said Buck Cannon would be more than happy to get three or four yards all night. They want to run behind those big guys. They want to keep O'Kill off the field. So it's definitely going to be a contrast of styles tonight. O'Kill is very undersized, and on defense, they're going to have to definitely shoot gaps and stunt and blitz. They don't want to get in a hand fight with those guys. That's something they're going to lose. So they're going to have to use their quickness to kind of elude some blocks tonight. And out come the Red Devils onto the field. American flag flying proudly in front of the team. There's nothing quite like a homecoming atmosphere. Nothing like it. Oh, high school homecoming. That's as, that's as good as it gets. Absolutely. So what, you're going back to the point you just made, what you're telling me is this game should be over in an hour and a half because McKenna likes to run the ball and Oak Hill does too. We should be home by nine. We should be home very quickly if, if things go according to form. Now, if we get penalties or th- <laughs> turnovers, injuries, things like that. But, yeah, he did tell me that Buchanan and, and what they'll do a lot of times, and we can pay attention to this tonight, they'll put the two big kids, they'll overload one side of the line. So on one side of the line, they might go just guard tight end then on the other side of the line, go guard, tackle, tackle. So they're not disguising where they're going. They're going to line up and go behind roughly almost 700 pounds of human flesh. That's what they want to do. But, and Oak Hill is going to have to be aware of that and, again, use their speed and quickness 
and not get locked up in a fight with those guys. It looks like we're going to see that right off the bat because it appears Buchanan Upshur has either won the toss and, de- and elected to keep, take the ball or he'll kill on the toss and elected to defer. We're going to see that Buchanan Upshur out here first. So interestingly enough, I think something Coach Marion's done the majority of the season is if he gets the toss, he's been going on offense and getting the ball first. And I was talking to Rob yesterday, and I think they're going to employ a different strategy moving forward. Every time they've gotten the ball, their drives have really stalled, and they haven't really went anywhere. And Oak Hill strength is his defense anyway. And I, there's different schools of thought on what to do if you win the toss. I've always been in the camp of take the ball in the second half because my biggest fear is this. You never want your opponent to get the last possession of the first half and then the first possession of the second half and have back-to-back possessions without you touching it. So I've always been a big proponent of if you get the if you win the toss, just defer to the second half. That make you know that you're getting the ball in the second half. I'm a New England Patriots fan. They made a living on that with Tom Brady. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know who won the toss either, but Rob told me that if even if they did win the toss, they were going to do something different probably the rest of the year and start deferring. So we'll set things up for you. Kill in the all black, some pink for breast cancer awareness month, showing us some of the uniforms. But can it up you're in a white helmet, white jersey, and blue pants. And we are underway. That ball's on the ground. It's being fielded at about the 30 and goes out. So that's going to put Buchanan up to an excellent field position. And right off the bat, again, they, I don't think they do anything. Uh, they don't, they're not trying to disguise what they're doing. They're going to run behind their big kids. And we see Ryan Kelly come out on the field right now, big number 79. And again, if you didn't hear me in the pregame just a few minutes ago, 6'7", 349. You don't hear those kind of stats when you're watching NFL games. No. I mean, that is a huge kid. And then he, they have another 324-pounder on the line with him. So, again, okay. It looks like, they, yeah, they've got two of the three big ones, out, uh, big players out there now. Yeah, and they'll do that. They'll, they'll line them up side by side, shoe to shoe, and they'll try to run right behind both of them. And it's going to be interesting to see what Oak Hill does. So... In an eye formation from the 35-yard line. Quarterback is under center. Brings a man in motion. Snap is back. Gets a handoff. Try to get to the far side, and he'll get maybe about a... That ball's on the ground, and it looks like Oak Hill's recovered. Let's see it. And we're waiting for an official ruling. Number 21, Isaiah Conley's holding the ball like he got it, and I think they're going to give it to him. They did give it to Oak Hill. So how's that for a defensive start? Well, you couldn't ask for a better start, and Buck Cannon did just what we thought they would do. They came in and they lined up, and they tried to run right behind those two big kids on the right-hand side. Now, Oak Hill lined up their beef right across from them, and that was number 70, uh, Derek Sullivan, who's six foot, 270 pounds himself, and he was joined over there. I missed that. I'll get that for you, but Oak Hill lined up um, their beef right across from them, and great start. You can't ask for a better start here. From the, th- from the 39-yard line of the Buccaneers, Oak Hill comes out with three receivers to the near side, single setback, and a receiver to the far side. It's a handoff up the middle, and that's going to get across the 30. I think they're giving the first down. It was J.D. Moritz is having a nice season for Oak Hill. And I can't tell if that's an electronic thing or if it's just a reflection, but look, but the down marker, or the, excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the down marker is actually uh, legible tonight. It looks, like, it, it looks like it's lit up. Yeah, I'm like you. I can't tell if that's just catching a light, but it looks like it might be lit up to me. Oak Hill coming out in roughly the same formation. They'll have a screen pass to the outside, and that's going to be across the 20 on line of the 19. It's a nice little bubble screen that time, and that for that to work, you have to get some blocking on the outside, and Armani Hicks was able to seal his man and was able to uh, let Elijah Gray have some room there on the outside. So nice little pickup that time for Oak Hill. Ball's resting on the 20 yard line. Oak Hill comes out, split two receivers to each side, single, running back in the backfield. Malachi takes the snap. He will throw up the middle. He's intercepted at the goal line. And he'll take out from the five to the 10, the 15 to the 20. And before he's wrestled down by a host of Bed Devils, so we're trading turnovers here in the, in the early going to this game. So I believe that was the big tackle, Ryan Kelly, who got good pressure and was able to get in Malachi's face. And uh, he, he couldn't get as much into that throw as he wanted to. So nice interception that time by Chase Hike at a 5'9", 129-pound 
Jr. is able to pick it off at the goal line, but give credit to uh, Big Ryan Kelly making his presence known on defense. And so Buchanan ups you with effectively no damage done. Comes out once again in that eye formation with this receiver to each side. And they're going ultra jumbo on the far side. And they're going to drop back and throw it. And that pass is going to be caught for a first down. Couldn't see a number out there. So I think that was number seven. Uh, I have that as Carter Zuliani. He's a 6'4", 218. That's a big target out there. Nice, nice pickup that time. Just a little quick slant. They had man coverage on the outside. He put it right on his chest. From the 34-yard line of their own, Buchanan Upshur comes out again in that I formation with the receiver to each side. And they'll hand the ball off this time. And you'll get about, mm, let's say, two yards on that call at second and eight. Again, Oak Hill's front bucked up that time. Didn't allow him. And, but, but Buchanan will keep doing that. Uh, they're they're going to keep just getting a few yards at a time, getting a few. They're not an explosive offense. They're not going to get chunk plays. But if they can keep the chains moving three or four yards at a time, they'll be happy to do that. They're a little behind the chains by about a yard, behind schedule by about a yard. On this one, they'll come out again in that I formation. And once again, another drop back. And that pass is just a little over his head, incomplete. I'll tell you what, when you see the matchup here on the outside, and we have um, Z Lewis out here, and he's in man coverage on Carter Zuliani, that is a huge size mismatch. Zuliani, 6'4, 218, and as a Point of comparison, Z is 5'8", 150. And when you look at him lined up man-to-man -man out there, I mean, it looks like there's no way that Z could stop him if they really wanted to get the ball to him. And Buchanan Upshur getting some instruction from the sideline. And again, they're, they got a different receiver out there now. This is Luke Yardley. He's 6'1", 215. Buchanan just has some big kids. Big targets for your quarterback, too, if you're looking to throw the ball. That's where you've... Uh tied some shoes we'll get going back here again snap is back it's a pass it's go oh, just almost intercepted but okay will force a punt it's a nice job that time malachi lewis from his safety position was kind of playing center field he was able to help on that uh, i don't think that was a post it looked like just a little go pattern that time from zuliani and again the, the size mismatch is huge. Now, when you look at Buck Cannon's receivers, I don't think they're burners. Snap is back. It's a good punt. And that will take a Buck Cannon up to bounce. And they're saying that went out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. So, Okil will take over effectively after a touchback. So, Lucas, when, when Buck Cannon's got the ball, it, so far from what I can tell, when they look to throw the ball, they're just they're in max protection and it looks like they're just sending out two receivers out, out in the pattern. So they're not doing anything um, They're not really unique. They're not doing anything uh, too off the books. I mean, that, that's, that's very basic football right there if you're just sending two receivers out in the pattern. But Mike's protection, and that's going to be pretty simple coverage for Oak Hill if they keep doing that. See if Oak Hill can have a better result of this drive. They'll start it from the 20-yard line. Handoff up the middle, and I think Malachi he pulled it out of his belly and ah, kept it. Yeah, that, that, that tricked me. Yeah, decent gain. Looks like they're going to give him maybe four there, but yeah, a little zone read. And, and what's interesting, I don't know if that's a true zone read or if that's called from the sidelines. My, my, Malachi may be reading a defender and deciding whether or not to hand it off or pull it, or that, can, that could be a you know a predetermined read. I don't know. So I'm just got to get Coach Marion's uh, playbook there. <laughs> here we go. Second and six for Oak Hill. Three receivers to the far side. Single receiver down here. And they'll hand it off once again. That's going to go nowhere. Yeah, that was J.D. And that was Carter Zuliani, who was uh, the receiver. Nice play that time uh, from his linebacker position. You don't see a lot of kids who play receiver on one side of the ball and linebacker on the other. No, you really that's don't. That's unusual. Yep, that's. But. He's made, he's made plays when he's been called upon. So at 8 and 19 on a rolling first quarter clock, it'll be third and six for Oak Hill. They're going to say he had no gain on that one. It's a long 6 2 because that ball's on the 25 yard line.
Three receivers to the bottom. And now Akai will take the snap. He will try to get out of it. And he will get out of it. And he'll launch a pass downfield. That pass is caught. And that's going to be That was uh, Elijah, Elijah Gray, Gray yeah. There. And that's, that's just great. Malachi using his athleticism. He was under, uh, under duress. I thought he was, frankly, sacked. He was able to spin out of that, extend the play, and get Elijah behind the defense. So big play, Oak Hill flips the field. And they have the ball now at, uh, oh, I'll say that's the 37-yard line. of Buchanan Lubshire. Trips to the, to the near side and we've got a whistle on the field. A flag is down. And let's see what the call is here. I think it's against Buchanan. Indeed it is. So it'll be first and five now. I didn't I didn't get what the call was. I mean, I, I didn't either. You almost have to think it's offsides, but I didn't, I didn't get the signal there. I didn't either. Because what else could it be if it's pre-snap and five yards? Uh, yeah, you would think it's offsides, mm -hmm. encroachment or something. Something. Whatever happened to encroachment being called, it's all offsides <laughs> yeah. now. Here's the snap. It's a handoff up the middle. Guess who? JD. And he's going to keep fighting, and I think he's got close. I, he, I think he got it. That's a good, strong run. They had that play blocked for four or five yards, and JD got about eight or nine on it. And you always won't like it when a bite can get more than what the play was blocked for. And JD's usually pretty good for that. And let's see here. We've the officials time out, it looks like. Are they going to measure? You know, we, we've made a joke all year. Officials just don't like to measure. They stopped, they stopped measuring it. They just look down and go, eh, looks close enough. Yeah, it's first down. At the very least, Let's see what they're going to do. They're going to have a conference at the very least. And we'll see what comes of it. Down marker still says second. I think I think they're going to bring them out and measure. They're going to make the chain gang earn their money. Yeah. Yep, and you are exactly right on that. So we'll see what the measurements come up here as. I think you got it for what it's worth. You're right. And he did. So there's one delay in getting us home before nine. Imagine. <laughs> there's still 7.09 on the first quarter clock. We've been able to move the clock fairly well for the most part. Almost half the first quarter beaten up. So all in all, not bad. And Malachi brings his team to the line. Trips to the near side. Single receiver out wide. Running back in the backfield next to his quarterback. And that'll be a pitch. J.D. has it. He will have the 20-yard line. And you'll have close to the 15. I'll call the 17. Yeah, nice. And I like that. It's a little speed option out to the wide side. And uh, Malachi was able to read the defensive end. Nice pitch to J.D. And another good, strong run from J.D. And we've got an injured Buchanan Upshur Buccaneer on the field. And we will take this time out with them. You are watching Oak Hill High School Football on the River Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 730 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Not that too. It looks like a night. Welcome back in. We'd like to take this time to thank Reno Medical Center for sponsoring tonight's game and helping us to bring you local high school athletics here on the Nerva Network. We couldn't do without them. We'll reset things here. The second and one for Oak Hill. And Malachi will throw, and that pass is deflected at the line. So again, make it third that, one. that was Zuliani again who's making his presence known. And I, I, I think I called him a linebacker. He might be a defensive end. He's actually putting his hand in the dirt. A lot, and uh, he already had a nice play on defense. That time he was able to bat that down. We're lucky that wasn't intercepted. Uh, actually, Malachi almost caught his own pass that yeah. time. Which goes, that would mean you can't advance it, right? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be where it was. 
He can advance it. He's, I, I, that's my understanding, unless it's something different in high school. Speaking of different in high school, we talked about that Ripley O Kill game earlier. I watched that game. I didn't know you're not allowed to hurdle in high school now. I didn't either. You're the somebody told me that. That actually ended up being a big play in the game, from what I understand. It took a touchdown off the board, and that would have been the difference of the game. That, uh, somebody told me that. I didn't realize that either. That you couldn't hurdle someone in high school. So yeah, there's from high school to college, the NFL. Sometimes there's minor rule differences that. We're not always aware of, but yeah, I was made aware that you couldn't do that either, and that ended up being a huge play for Oak Hill in that game. Fun time. Every time my dad and I watch college football and someone hurt us, he thinks it's a college rule. And I have to go back and like, no, that was in an Oak Hill game we watched. Yeah. One of the ones I didn't do. So we were together when we did that, when we saw that. Anyway, it's a third and six here for Oak Hill. We'll have three receivers to the near side, and a snap is back. He will look. It's out to guess who. That's a first down. Nice job that time. So that was Elijah Gray, and it looked like Buck Cannon was in some type of zone. And he just goes and runs a little button hook and finds the soft spot in the zone, sets down, and Malachi is able to put it right on his number. So nice-looking little pass play right there. From the 11-yard line, you can get a first down without scoring. Notable to bring that up in this part of the field. Three receivers to the near side, single receiver out wide, man comes in motion. Malachi takes the snap. He hands the ball off. J.D. Moritz will have the outside, and he'll get to about the six-and-a-half-yard line. Or the five-and-a-half, rather. I'm sorry. So big Derek Sullivan, a six-foot, 270-pound sophomore, he's filling in for Braxton Kaffer. Braxton was the starting guard to start the year. He's, going, he's out with an injury. Derek's taking his place. He pulled that time, was able to spring J.D. for a nice little game. Second and four, we'll say. Malachi takes the snap. It's a quarterback keep up the middle, and he is He's in. in. Yeah. Touchdown, no kill. Nicely designed play. So they have J.D. in the backfield, and they motion him out to an empty set. And that's something we've seen O'Kill do a lot here this year. When they motion J.D. out, there's a good chance that that's going to be a design QB draw, and that's exactly what it was for Malachi. So O'Kill gets on the board here first. And we'll have the extra point coming up here. Jackson Pino working through his warm-up kicks. And we're ready to go. Snap is back. Kick is up. Kick's on the way. And the kick is no good. So in 5 6 to go in the first quarter, Oak Hill strikes first. 6 nothing Red Devils. We'll be back on the Nerva Network. Welcome back in to New Event Network's coverage of high school football. Oak Hill High School has a 6-0 lead on Buchanan Lobster here with 5.06 to go in the first quarter. And, Chris, that was a really good drive Oak put together. Yeah, it really was a nice drive. I, I guess the key play was uh, on third down, Malachi getting out from pressure and hitting Elijah down the field to keep that drive alive. So we'll see what the Oak Hill defense has in store against that Buchanan Lobster behemoth of an offensive front. And that kick is going to be fielded at about the 31-yard line. It hits an up man, and he'll get to about the 34. That's the second time Oak Hill has kicked it right to that up man. Yeah, I mean, they're they're not trying to do anything too fancy uh, kicking the ball off. They're just trying to get it down the field, it looks like, and without kicking it out of bounds. Yeah, and that's, you know, if, if you're watching high school football, the kicking game can be really iffy sometimes, and we've already seen it with the missed extra point. You're not... You're not seeing a lot of deep kickoffs. Now, we saw it with Ethan Vargo Thomas during his time here, but that can be kind of a rarity. It is the great equalizer in so many ways, special teams. And once again, Buchanan up in that eye formation. They'll hand the ball off, and that's going to go for, well, I thought it was going to go for quite a bit, but that shoestring tackle might have saved a touchdown. 
That was a really nice tackle. They uh, ran a little trap play on the right-hand side. That was Malachi Lewis from his safety position making the tackle number 25, Wyatt Morris, a six foot, 168-pound junior. But again, they're running behind their beef that time, and then they that time they actually pulled a guard. So they, had, they were running behind the house that time on the right-hand side. And all it got them was seven yards. Second down and three for the Buccaneers here. Near the 50. Not quite there yet, but they're getting there. And this one will go up the middle. He will not get the 45. Little inside handoff to the fullback that time. They didn't quite get the number all. Number 22 for Buckhannon. That was going to be Daniel Hedrick. Small fullback. I don't know, 161 pound fullback. You usually see bigger fullbacks than that. When you got that kind of beef up front, do maybe you don't need, need a big, a big fullback? fullback, do you? That's true. Under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Just as soon as I said the game was at a good pace, it slows down. From the 45-yard line, first and 10 for Buchanan option. That ball is on the ground. It's going to be recovered. And that was a great example of just living to see another down, getting right back to the line. Yeah, the, uh, the quarterback kind of stumbled. They were trying to run a little counter play that time to the tailback. He kind of stumbled. The tailback kind of stumbled. They're lucky that it wasn't worse than that. Aaron Higginbotham came up and was able to make the stop. I actually thought he might squirt through that mess for a minute and pick up some yardage, but... Mm -hmm. Aaron made a nice tackle that time for Oak Hill. Second and 10 in that familiar formation. This feels like the Woodrow Wilson game all over again from last year, the second formation. And they'll drop back, and that pass is incomplete, so it'll be third and 10. And this is not where Buchanan Upshur wants to be. So nice pressure off the edge that time by Isaiah Conley. They were trying to sneak the fullback out in the flat, but Isaiah made him uh, rush the throw, and you're right. Third and ten, and if you know if you're looking at what Buckhan is doing, they're not, they're, they have a very tight bunch eye formation. Um, you know they have a couple of receivers out to either side, but I mean this is this is definitely like 1983 football. This is the football that I grew up on. I I like, but you don't you don't see a lot of eye formations with tight ends anymore. And that's that seems to be Buckhan's standard formation. I, I didn't grow up on it, but I love it. Once again, the quarterback, he will drop back, though, and that pass is going to be caught. What a good catch that was across the 40-yard line. Sure was. That was a great catch. That was a good ball. I think that was Luke Yardley. And, again, those, those are the kind of pass plays, if I'm Buck Cannon, I'm looking for. I'm looking for slants over the middle. I'm not really trying to go deep. I don't think they're going to make their hay trying to run by Oak Hill's defensive backs. But if they can run little slants and use their bodies to shield them, I think those might be there. There's a big size mismatch on the outside for Buchanan. Agreed. Under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Buchanan up in that surprise, surprise eye formation. Hand the ball off. And don't get about mm, five, six yards. Yeah, there. that's solid yardage. Again, a little inside give to the fullback that time. And, the, and that's what Rob Long told me. They'll do that all day. They, they will take the, that kind of yardage all day and just – plod down the field and try to move the chains and keep O'Kill's offense off the field. Officially, it's a five-yard gain, so second down and five here for the Buccaneers. In the 34-yard line. Change in formation now. They'll bring a receiver, and guess what? They will go to somewhat like that formation. And I think he's... It's going to be short, about two yards short. So it'll be third and two. Yeah, that time they brought Zuliani. He was, they had twins lined up out here. Zuliani was in a slot, and they brought him across the formation and, and helped him uh, be, be a lead blocker on the right-hand side there. And, again, that right-hand side, by the time you put Zuliani in motion, you're looking at maybe 800, 900 pounds over there trying to create a hole for Buck Cannon's backs. There's that familiar formation. We're down to nearly a minute 30 to go in the first quarter, and that's another handoff up the middle. I... He got it. Yeah, he got that. That's going to move the chains. Again, a little to the fullback. Smallish. And again, that's uh, Daniel Hedrick, only 161 pounds at five foot six. You're used to seeing bigger fullbacks, but they're feeding him the ball. He's running behind that massive. You, may, he, you know, he's probably a little hard to see back there, too, when you have linemen that big and tall. So, Oak Hill might be having a little trouble even spotting him once he's getting the ball. I think Noel Devine running behind that 07 West Virginia line. Yeah. Same formation, same play, no different result. 
A first down on the first play from the, of that set. Yeah, a nice. Again, they're pulling that left guard, and they ran a little counter play that time, and uh, they, nice hole that time. This is a good drive for Buchanan, easily their best drive of the game. And this is exactly what they want to do. Save being in that third and ten, this is exactly how they want to play this game. And that third and ten was huge. That was a big conversion in the passing game for them. It kept this drive alive. Under a minute to go on a rolling first quarter clock. Six nothing. Oak Hill with the lead. Buchanan Lepsher though driving, trying to change that. Here's a handoff up the middle, and that's a good tackle to save. I don't know if he would have scored, but he would have got at least another five yards. Well, I'll tell you what, they're starting to get yards in chunks now. What were two and three yard gains are turning into seven and eight yard gains now on first down. So again, Oak Hill's gonna have to make an I mean Oak Hill, I mean, they have like eight or nine guys right at the line of scrimmage. So they're crowding the line of scrimmage. But uh right now it looks like that that those big kids for Buchanan are able to wall them off and they're able to get their hands on them. There's no need for Buchanan left to snap it. We're down to 10 seconds in the quarter and 24 on the play clock, and they're not going to do that. So at the end of the first quarter, Oak Hill has a 6-0 lead in this one, and we shall return to the Nerva Network right after this. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back to the New Venables coverage of high school football, Oak Hill High School, hosting Buchanan Lepshire, and Oak Hill has like 6 nothing lead, but the Buccaneers are on the move trying to change that. And they line up in a nice formation. They've been in that formation 95% of the time tonight, and it has worked on this drive. I, I don't think they've lined up in anything other than an off one. The only thing they're doing different, every once in a while they'll put twins on one side, then other than that they'll, they'll put a receiver to each side. They had the one where they overloaded on one side and they brought the man in motion. That was it. Well, good everyone set here. That's my partner, Chris Rader, speaking in case you uh, joined us a little bit later. I'm Lucas Berry with you, and we are ready to go. First play of the second quarter. Ken Lepshire hands the ball off, and that's going to get uh, to about the seven-yard line, I think. Yeah, Oak Hill bowed up a little bit that time. Didn't allow as much as they have the previous two or three carries. Of course, this is obviously going to be four-down territory. But Cannon may just decide to try to run it three more times. They had, definitely have man coverage on either side of the field because Oak Hill's putting eight or nine guys in the box right now. I wouldn't hate that play if they tried to run another little slant with those big-bodied receivers. No, third down and one here. Man comes in motion. And it's, again, a run to that near to the far side. And he didn't get in, but he got a first down. So that'll put the ball at, like, the one. And I'll tell you what, when you're watching the game, I think that was number 76, Ryan Thompson. He's 6'3", 271. He was driving his man into the end zone. Buck Hannon just has some big kids up front. Yeah, you have to think that this might wear on Oak Hill as the game goes on. First and goal from the one. Snap is back. It's a handoff, and he is in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Yeah, that's that's what Buck Hannon wants to do tonight, and that was right down the field, very methodical, and just running behind that big offensive line. That was a good-looking drive from the Buccaneers. If, you, if you'd have asked their coach how you draw it up, they would have laid that drive out. To that's the textbook. Yeah, that's what they want to do. So we'll try to break the tie here. It's 6-6. Six, six. And we'll see if they do break the tie. Snap is back. Kick is up. Kick's on the way. And it is good. So Buchanan Lepture does take a 7-6 lead here. 
And we'll reset everything and come back after this on the Nerva Network. Welcome back in here to New River Network's coverage of Oak Hill High School football. Lucas Berry and Chris Rader with you. And Chris, we talked about it earlier. That was Buchanan Upshur's textbook drive. Now it's time to see how Oak Hill responds on offense. Yeah, Oak Hill wants to get something going themselves. And I, I think this is definitely a, a contrast in styles. you got Buchanan with their power. And I, th I do think Oak Hill has a little advantage uh, athletically and probably, you know, quickness and a little faster than Buchanan. So let's see if they can – Maybe get some of their athletes in space and respond here. And that kick is on the ground. It takes a weird hop. It'll be fielded at about the 21. And they'll gain, uh, let's say they gain 13 yards on that. So it'll take, they'll take over the 34. Yeah, that was a weird hop. I actually thought that might be trouble for a minute there. Um, nice job that time by Z. Lewis to field that. It kind of, I thought that might bounce over his head. But yeah, the kicker definitely made that a little harder to field than you would normally think. That was like a real, really weird one hopper out to short one. Now it does look like Kelly was in there defensively on one series, but it does look like that Buchanan will rotate those big guys out and give them a break and bring in some different guys here on defense that are a little smaller. They don't have as much beef on defense as they do offense. Okay, well, with a screen out to the near side, that pass will be caught. It'll be a first down, and that is... That's David Spalding, David and that, Spalding, that's yes. been a bread and butter play for Oak Hill this year. That little tunnel screen, they really block that up well. And that that might be, and again, that's I talked earlier about getting athletes in space. That's what they're trying to do right there. First and 10 for the Red Devils from the 40, 47 yard line. Just a freaking head, just a quick pencil math there <laughs> on the field. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side, and the can off comes up the middle. And J.D. Moritz will fight for the 50. He'll get the 49. You know, that looks like, that's a solid four yards. That It, it always looks like J.D.'s getting stuffed, but then he, he just keeps his legs churning, keeps his legs churning. And before you know it, you know, he's got four yards. And we talked about Buck Cannon will take, okay, he'll take that too. They'll yeah. take four yards on first down. I don't know of any coach who wouldn't no, take four absolutely yards on first not. down. I tell you what, though, I don't know what JD's plans are after high school. After high school, but he might want to find a collegiate rugby team. <laughs> yeah. From the 49-yard line of Buchanan Upshur, just across midfield, Oak Hill with the same three receivers to the near side. He fakes a pass way downfield. That's Elijah Gray, and he'll get to the 24-yard line before he's pushed out. Big play. I'll tell you what, and that's that's such a good call. And they set that up. A lot of, a lot of play calling is a lot of times setting up plays for later. And that's exactly Oak Hill's thrown what three screens already? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. And then that time he pump fakes, they bite, and he actually had two guys wide open down the uh, down the sideline. So really nice job by the Oak Hill staff that time to set that play up, showing them screen game, screen game, screen game, then fake it, go deep. First and 10 from the 14-yard line for the Red Devils. Now Akai takes the snap. It's a handoff up the middle to J.D. Moritz. He will get to cross the 10 to the 9-yard line. That's a solid five. Yeah, and they're, they're, Oak Hill's doing a good job tonight of really uh, being diverse. They're mixing up what they want to do, a good mix of run and pass. Every coach in this country, unless they're really dedicated to one thing, will tell you, I want to be balanced. And Oak Hill is doing that tonight. Definitely, yeah, they are balanced tonight. Here's a different one. Two receivers to each side for Oak Hill with a single running back in the backfield. Man comes in motion across the formation. Malachi takes the snap. He'll hand it off. And J.D., for one of the rare times, doesn't gain anything. He didn't get much. And, again, I've called his name about three times. Like Carter Zuliani is doing a nice job from his defensive end position. He's a big kid, 6'4", 218. Now they put 
Big Ryan Kelly in there. As Oak Hill gets inside the 10, now they put some of the beef back in there. Kelly's the 6'7", 349-pound tackle, and they try to give him as much rest as they can, but he's in here on the goal line situation. Third and a long one, really long one. Screen pass, and before anything happens, ah. we got a false start on Oak Hill. Boy, and I think Oak Hill had that set up nicely, too. If, without the flag, they might score. They looks like they had that blocked up pretty well. South push it back to a third and a long six. That was a really, that looked like two to me, but it was listed as one. And I was looking at Adam Long, the right guard, who was trying to block Kelly. Man, you're talking about a size differential down there. I mean, Adam's going to, he'll bring it all night. He's not, he's not afraid, but boy, he's given up a lot of size to mm -hmm. Big Ryan Kelly down there. Three to the far side, one to the near side. It's a pitch out to J.D. Moritz, and he almost falls. And he will get tackled, so he'll gain about two at best. That'll be up fourth down and four. Chris, what are you thinking? Uh, I think they're probably going to go for it. We've already seen Coach Marion in, in, in position earlier this year against Independence when he could have kicked a short field goal. He went for it. We already saw a missed extra point, so he might not be feeling great about his kicking game. And it's also on a hash. It's not in the middle of the field. If it was in the middle of the field, they're going to take a timeout and think about it, actually. We will take that time with him and confirm amongst ourselves what we think. We'll come back and let you know what the conversation turns up like on the Nuba Network right after this. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back here on the Nuba Network. Big fourth down and five. They, I said he got two. They gave him one. So it's fourth and five here for O'Kill. Snap is back. Malachi looks. He will. Mm. I didn't see what happened. Well, he looking. pulled. He pulled it down. He was trying. That was that was Ryan Kelly, the big tackle. Malachi pulled it down. He was going to try to get the first down or possibly the touchdown with his legs, but he couldn't get past Ryan Kelly. So Buck Cannon, nice stop on defense that time after allowing O'Kill to get inside the 10. So that's a big stop for the Buccaneers. And it, it, this, it feels like this kind of game, right? I mean, we all know you want to keep it uh, posting him out of the end zone. But if you can really stop, if you can go three and out, you win the field position battle in this drive. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if O'Kill can start their way towards that. If they can it up, just got a long quarter-killing drive in him. In the eye formation, they'll run across the formation, and that handoff will go nowhere. Nice to have job that time by Mikey Spike from his uh, outside linebacker position. He was able to stuff that for little to no. He might have got half, maybe a yard. They're going to say he did get a yard, so it'll be second and nine for the Buccaneers. Ball is resting just shy of the 10-yard line. Familiar eye formation with the receiver to each side, and I think something happened on the snap. Yeah, it was hard. It looked like the – I thought maybe there was a fumble for a minute. It's really hard to tell up here from our angle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the viewing audience has a better angle than we do, but when it's down there around the goal line, we can't always tell what happened. It looks like there might have been uh, a ball handling miscue. Whatever, it worked out well for the Devils. Now you got Buck Cannon in a – third and long within the shadow of their own goal line. That's where, exactly where you want to have them. Third and 12 to be precise. It was seven minutes, under seven minutes now on a rolling second quarter clock. In the eye formation once again. You know, drop back to pass. And he's got a man. And I think we had some holding out there on the Red Devils, but nothing gets called. So they'll force a punt. And again, that was Elijah Gray uh, matched up out there. I'm going to try to see who that is for Buck Cannon. That might have been 
Luke, Luke Yardley, number eight. But, again, I, I know it was third and 12. I don't think Buck Cannon's going to make their hay in the passing game trying to go downfield. I think they're going to make their hay with what they've been doing, quick slants, crossing routes, something like that, where they can kind of box out their defender. I don't so think they're going to outrun them. See, Velcro rushes a punt. They almost get there. And I think he – did someone get a hand to that? Mikey Spike was back – was um, back there. He might have. I couldn't tell. If he lays out, he probably blocks that. He had a. He definitely got good penetration. And Z. Lewis doesn't get much on the return, but he does get something. So Oak Hill will set up here. Just like I said last time, they won the field position battle in that game, in that drive, and they set themselves up very nicely here from the 34. Yeah, you can't ask for better starting field position. They're already in four down territory here. At the 634 mark. So Malachi Lewis brings his team to the line. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side, and a running back with him in the backfield. Takes the snap. Fakes. Thought he had someone open, doesn't. He's taking himself ah. and he slips. And that'll get two yards, make it second and eight. So they tried to do that again. They they show they tried to fake that screen and then Send Elijah Gray deep. That time, Buck Cannon was ready for it. Their safeties were back. They had that covered up pretty well. And Malachi actually made a good decision. He didn't try to force it. He tucked it. You know, he got a couple yards, but that's better than trying to throw it into coverage. So exactly. That's it. the maturation of Malachi as a quarterback, too. Maybe the first game of the year, he's trying to force that into coverage. Same formation. We'll see if what happens here. Under six minutes to go until halftime. Handoff. J.D. Moritz, positive yardage. I'll say you got four there, make it sec make it third and five. Yeah, he got swallowed up by a big Ryan Kelly, who's again in their own uh, defensive series now for the Buccaneers. 537 on a rolling second quarter clock, approaching the halftime homecoming festivities here at Oak Hill High School. We've got a good one though, seven sticks, Buchanan up so with the lead. Now maybe you throw that screen now. You've, you've faked it a couple times, maybe come back to it. And they will. And Lee Lewis will have the – he kept fighting in the other 17. Really nice job that time by Z. And Oak Hill runs those screens pretty well. In a, in a third and medium situation, that's a good go-to play for, for Coach Marion and the Devils. And they've done that several times this year. They'll give him the 16, a little more generous than I. 5.15 to go in the first half. Oak Hill driving, trying to take the lead back from the cannon up to at 7-6. Buccaneers with the lead, coming all the way down from the cannon. Here's the snap. Fake the handoff. Tries to throw it. Has a man. Oh, nice. Caught. Touchdown, yeah. Oak Hill. He fit that in a tight window that time, too, Lucas. Um, Buck Hanna had a couple guys back there. He didn't have. He had to put it right where he put it. I thought for a second it got picked off. No, that was really, did. really nice. He didn't have. He didn't have a lot of room to put that in there. But a really nice throw from Malachi. Good job. Good drive. And so it's 12-7, and they are going to line up to take, kick, kick the extra point here. So we'll see what uh, comes of this. Jackson Pino is back there, trying to rebound and get back on the score sheet, as it were. Snap is back, kick is up, kicks on the way, and that kick is good. So with 5.09 to go in the first half, Oak Hill has retaken the lead. It's 13-7 Red Devils, and we'll get back right after this on the Nerva Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back into New Network's coverage of high school football. 
Oak Hill High School has just retaken the lead over Buchanan Oaks for 13-7 with 5.09 to go in the first half. And Chris Rader, that was about as good an answer offensively to what Buchanan Oaks had done as you could ask for. Yeah, Malachi made a couple nice. That was a really nice TD pass because um, he didn't have a kid wide open. He had to fit that in between two defenders. So that was a really impressive pass by Malachi. Jackson Pino kicks off. That ball's on the ground. It finds an up man once again. And... That will be returned across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. So really good field position for the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers to start out here. We talked in the pregame about this being a contrast of styles, and we're really seeing that play out. Buchanan just getting that eye formation, lining up shoe to shoe, and try to run it right down Oak Hill's throat. Oak Hill comes out, and they're three or four spread. And they've really, their biggest plays, and they've come in the passing game. And I would imagine with 5.04 to go, but Ken Lepster does not want Oak Hill to touch that ball again for the second half. That would be their ideal drive, is to cross the goal line as the clock hits zeros. Isn't that everyone's, isn't that everyone's yes, ideal is. drive? <laughs> Here we go. Here's a handoff up the middle, and they'll cross the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Couldn't see a number on that one. Malachi Lewis came up from his safety position. Uh, Malachi's a really short tackler. He's not the biggest kid in the world, but I've seen him several times this year come up and make really nice plays from his safety position. He did that time, too. He was able to make a sure tackle. I mean, that was a solid game. They got about four yards, but he kept it from going any, any further than that. 4.35 on a winding first, uh, second half, second quarter, first half clock. There we go. And that will be a handoff. He's not quite to the 50. They're going to mark him at the 48. I thought he'd get the 49. Yeah, nice job at time by Derek Sullivan. And Oak Hill's got their beef in there. Colton Naylor, Derek Sullivan, uh, Desmond Mack is not in there. He's he's probably the next biggest kid Oak Hill's got. So they're trying to match them beef for beef in there inside a little bit and wall up here. Big third down. Third down and four. Four minutes to go in the first half. But Cannon Upshur rolling out. And that pass is going to be... They say he caught it. Yeah, I didn't. It was close. That was close. And again, that was Zuliani. Zuliani. Little little play action roll out to the right. Zuliani. He had uh, th three different options at different levels down the field. Zuliani was the middle level of those three options, and I guess he was able to get a foot down. And that's a nice little pass. It keeps the drive alive. He gets in the 44-yard line of the Red Devils, and they're back in that familiar right formation. Here's the handoff at the start on the far side, came back in the middle, and will get the 40, so that'll be a nice four-yard gain, second and six. Yeah, and, and Buchanan, again, we talked, if they can get four or five yards, they'll, uh, and that's solid five yards, four yards, second and six, I guess, officially. Now Oak Hill does have their three biggest kids in there on the interior line, so that's Mike Sullivan and Colton Naylor. So Oak Hill's got their three biggest kids on there right now on defense. Under three and a half to play in our first half. Here is the snap. It's a handoff. And that's a good stop there. And it's going to stop him short of the first down. And again, that's Malachi Lewis. And uh, he's he's a really sure tackler from the safety position. And while he's not he's not big, he he brings it. And that was a solid hit. Yeah, it really was. Malachi's a good defensive player, good safety. We're under three minutes now, and so with with all three timeouts, there's no real rush for the cannon up sure. But you're getting into that time where you can't afford to be wasting a whole lot of it. And so we'll see what they have in store for us here. Again, under center. And I think they got to go to jump. Adam Long was trying to time that. And we've got a whistle on the field. But Cannon. Time out, but Cannon. You know, it looked like Adam may have knocked his defensive lineman into the, the neutral zone. They didn't call it. Buck Cannon definitely wanted that called. So we'll set things up here. It's 2.38 to go in the first half. So now you do have only two timeouts from the Cannon up here. It feels like to me that we are in a situation where you might see the Cannon start trying to throw a little bit more. No, not that you really want to give Oak Hill any time left, but I, I'm of the belief in terms of football, I don't want to end up being rushed at the end of the half, end of the game, by having to do everything in 45 seconds. I'd rather have time to run my offense the way I want to do it. Oh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I mean, they, they're 
it's definitely, you know, power run, power run, power run. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see a little play action fake. But they they have single coverage on the outside for the most part. Every it depends on what Malachi's doing back there at the safety position. But we've already seen it looks like he's definitely intent on supporting the run. So if they can get Malachi peeking into the backfield, they're gonna have single coverage with their receivers. So we'll see what comes out here. They're in that bunch, and I guarantee you they'll bring Zuliani in motion here. Yep. Comes across the formation. They'll snap and hand it off, and Okio has read that like a book. Yeah, they nice job. They brought Zuliani in motion, and previously what they bring him in motion, and then they'll run behind that motion. That time they tried to run over the right-hand side, but again, it looks like Der Derek Sullivan and Colton Naylor were able to buck up that time. So you got a fourth and short. This would be a, a big stop for Oak Hill if they could stop him here. And I I mean, you have to think they're probably going to try to do that again. I would think. Fourth and one. So we'll see what, and that's not even a full yard. This is fourth and inches. I love QB sneaks here. Man comes in motion, Zuliani. They'll run behind that motion. They will get a first down. Yeah. Yeah, that time they went back to their tendency, which is to bring Zuliani in motion and then run behind him. And it worked out that time for him. So, yeah, we're under two minutes now, Lucas. And to your point, they're still 32 yards out. So we'll see if they want to try to sneak a play-action pass in here against Oak Hill at some point. And there it goes. He's going to roll out to his right. He's got a man. Not, nice play that time. Adam Long from his linebacker position. So we mentioned that Buckhannon might try to sneak a play action. I thought they might try to go downfield a little bit more than that. They tried to sneak the fullback out in the flat. And Adam Long, who's just, you know, really good football player, he's got a high football IQ, wasn't fooled at all. And he was able to not, he almost intercepted it. So a buck 29 to go here in our first half. Okio holding on to a one score 13 7 lead. Couldn't ask for a closer game on homecoming. Two receivers to the far side in an eye formation. Screen, and that's going to be caught for about, oh, I'd say a six yard game. And that's not a bad idea when you have such a size mismatch out there. Just get, throw it out there to Zuliani, see if he can maybe have a stiff arm, maybe run somebody over. He got six yards basically on his own that time. Not a bad call. Third and four with a minute. They they will be under a minute by the time they snap this football. Yeah, and they still have two timeouts left, and they're they're taking their sweet time too. I mean, they're not in a this hurry. This almost reminds you of Nicholas counting. That yeah, they, game, they might want to pick it up a little bit. Although if they choose not to, I don't think I don't want anyone who's going to complain. Here we go, and flags on the field. Ball started against the Buccaneers. That's going to drive head coach Zach Davis crazy. Because they had they had what they wanted out there. Again, they just they run a little button hook out there. That was they had completed it, but the false start now puts them behind the chains a little bit under with under a minute left. So that's that's a big penalty for Buchanan. Three nine point four, and it's third and nine. You have almost I mean even with your timeouts, you got to throw it here, right? I would think. Yeah, I would think. They, we'll see if they want to maybe try to sneak a draw in or something like that. One receiver to the near side, inside the numbers. And that pass is going to be, it's not a pass, I'm sorry, it's a rush. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, timeout, Oak Hill. So they tried to run a counter play that time. Aaron Higginbotham made a nice play from his linebacker spot. So yeah, the, now they're in fourth, eight, fourth and eight, something like that. Something like that, but, not, not where they want to be. Yeah, exactly. And they do, they do not have an explosive passing game. They have a methodical passing game. And, again, from what I've seen, they, they'll, sit, they'll send two receivers out. They'll sneak a back out occasionally, but uh, they don't do anything in the passing game that's going to fool you. It's, it's very basic stuff. Are you a little bit surprised they'll kill Colt that timeout instead of Buchanan Upshire? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you, you know, if you're Oak Hill, you, you, you kind of want that clock to keep running. I, I see. I guess I see both sides of that. You want to make sure that on this fourth down that you're buttoned up and everybody knows what they're doing and you have assignments 
lined out for everybody. But, yeah, I see your point as well. You know, if you're O'Kill, just let's let that clock run. Because Buck Cannon doesn't look like they get in a hurry regardless of clock situation anyway. Right. So we'll set things up here once again. Fourth and nine for the Buccaneers. 43.4 to go in our first half. 13-7 O'Kill. It's been a good one so far. It's been a contrast of styles. And thus far, O'Kill style has the lead and the advantage. So we'll see what happens here. But can Lepster in that familiar eye formation? They'll roll out through a pass, and that pass is going to be caught. And he got a first down. With 37 even to go in the first half. So that time they lined Zuliani up at tight end. We've seen him lined out wide most of the game. That time they lined him up at tight end and just ran a little out pattern. They had the QB roll out, and he put it right on him. I mean, it was pretty good coverage out there, but it was a nice route and a nice pass. And with the clock winding to 30.2 seconds, Buchanan Levis would take a timeout. That's what I was waiting for. So that gets him down to one timeout, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you have to think at this point, with one timeout, they – they have to – I don't know what kind of kicking situation they have, but they're probably thinking end zone. So you, th- you have to think they're, they're looking to get the ball in the end zone through the passing game here. You would think because they don't really have the option to to, to, what, to have their run game now. Not, re- not as much. Not really, no. You're right. Not with 30 seconds left and only one time out. No. So now you're in a situation where if you're okay, I, I, I know you're – you're playing defense and you've got you know a, a slim one score lead but you've just forced this team that has been playing one way the entire season to be in a situation where they don't like to be in and they're and they're down you have to feel good if you're okay yeah but cannon doesn't want to they don't want to have to throw but i think they are in a situation if they want to get in the end zone they're probably going to have to put the ball up again so we'll see what happens you're in that eye formation once again it's a pass, and he was going for Giuliani. That pass is going to be incomplete. I thought he came down with it. So that time, good pressure from O'Kill. And, yeah, Malachi was just playing in the safety position, playing center field. They tried to sneak Giuliani right down the seam that time. Malachi was just waiting on it. I thought he had a pick, too, but did a nice job just to break it up. It does, however, stop the clock with 24.8 seconds to go in the first half. Buccaneers coming to the line with two receivers out to the far side. I guarantee you Giuliani comes in motion. No, they did not bring him in motion. But they will try to get it out to him, and that pass is incomplete with several flags down on the field. Yeah, I didn't see what happened there. We'll see what the call is here. Okay, again, with, with pretty good pressure to flush Tenney out, and he was rolling to his left that time, which is a little harder throw for a right-handed kid. Yeah, I didn't see either. We'll see what the calls are here. Oh, defensive, we have a holding. Maybe a holding in the secondary there. So that's going to give him an automatic first down. That's definitely not what Coach Marion wanted. No, far from it. It's a big call. It's a really big call. It'll set Buchanan Lepster up very well here. Because that'll move the ball to, looks like, the 12-yard line. And now, you know, move a little bit closer. We'll see if they want to maybe try to pop in a run here with the timeout. They could, st- they could you know, try to run the ball one more time and still stop the clock. I, I tell you what, I would, if I'm Buchanan, I'd, I'm looking at a slant to one of those big-bodied receivers and just see if they can box out one of the Oak Hill smaller defensive backs. I'm with you. We'll see what transpires right here. It has Buchanan Lepster and that behemoth of an offensive front <laughs> comes up. Snap is back. It's a pass to the end zone, and it's well defended. And I mean well defended there to fourth second down. Yeah, that was a nice play that time by Z. Lewis. They tried to run a fade to the corner of the end zone. Now, I'll tell you what, if they're going to do that, that's not one of their bigger receivers. If I'm going to try to run a fade, I'm, I'm thinking Zuliani for that. He's 6'4". That was Bryson Johnston. 
who I don't think they've targeted him tonight, but nice job by Z. And I was watching Malachi on the snap that time from his safety position. He's anticipating the slants I was talking about. He was Now we have Zuliani out there. Snap is back. It's a handoff, curiously, and timeout will not be called. That clock is running. Now it will at 4.6 seconds, and I, I'm, go, I'm going to figure out what happened there. So that was Colton Naylor, and it looked like Isaiah Conley on the tackle there. So they... It looks like they had, they had called their last time out with 4.6 seconds left. And, again, we're kind of unfamiliar with their kicking game, so we'll see if they want to try to kick a field goal here, if they want to take a shot at the end zone. That, that running call, though, I mean, with 19, I get it. With 8, I, I'm not sure I get it. Yeah, that was kind of a curious call. I guess they thought maybe they could sneak one past O'Kill, but, yeah, O'Kill definitely had that defended well. It looks like they're going to line up to kick it here, so we'll see what comes of this. This is number 18, Wyatt Mason. He's a six foot, 165 pound junior. This is from the right hash. Kick is up. It's on the way, and it is no yeah, good. Push that right. Wide right. 1.1 second to go until halftime. That's a big stop for Oak Hill. Yeah, it is a big stop for Oak Hill. Uh, good drive from Buckhand. I mean, we did. they did exactly what they wanted to do. They they just burnt all the time off the, the clock. But when you don't come away with points, sometimes that's kind of all for naught. So nice nice job to bow up down there by the Red Devils. To that point, since we've got one last play here, if you're Buchanan up, should be able to move the ball the last few drives we can't score. What are you saying at halftime? Well, I mean, you want to get stops. What the – for the most, they're just not an explosive team. I mean, I think we're seeing that. They, they, everything that they do is hard. They have to string together, play, play. And the, the hard part about that is if you have to string together 10, 12, 15 play drives, then you can't have a penalty. You can't have a missed assignment. So it puts a lot of pressure on your offense when you can't get chunk plays. It's a little screen pass for Oak Hill. It's a double pass. And that's going to be intercepted with a bunch of flags down the field. And chaos has ensued on the field, it felt like, as that interception goes back to the 40. We'll see what this flag is. Time has expired, by the way. Yeah, I think they'll, I'm sure they'll just decline. Everybody's going to go into the locker room at so, this yes. point. Yeah. And that is what has occurred. 13-7 Red Devils with the lead to half. We shall return on the new network. Until then, enjoy the halftime festivities on Homecoming 2023 at Oak Hill High School. Stay with us, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network.
our 2023 homecoming court. Our freshman female attendant is Miss Addison McVeigh. Addison is an honor roll student, varsity cheerleader, a member of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Being on the homecoming court is very important to her because she has the chance to represent her freshman class and to prove that she can do anything that she sets her mind to. She would like to thank Ms. Cortinez for supporting her for homecoming court and for being so kind and helpful in her transition to high school. Presenting Addison, her flowers this evening is cheerleader Jessalyn Jones. Escorting Addison tonight is our freshman male attendant, Mr. Cade Compton. Cade is an honor roll student. He wrestles and plays football. Being on the homecoming court is very important to Cade because he gets to represent his class and because his dad never won during his high school years. So he gets to one up him. Cade would like to thank Mr. Clouston for always motivating him every day with his witty banter. Our sophomore female attendant tonight is Miss Alexis Stanley. Alexis is an All-American softball player. She will be playing softball with the team against with the team again this summer in Australia. She is a Fellowship of Christian Athletes leader. She is a student council vice president, a softball player, and a majorette in the band. Being on homecoming court is important to Lexi because she loves to show her school spirit and represent her class. She would like to thank Mr. Myers this evening for giving her a chance, always listening to her, and giving her a good laugh. Presenting Lexi with her flowers this evening is cheerleader Emma Bickford. Escorting Alexis tonight is our sophomore male attendant, Mr. Clayton Wood. Clayton was nominated Superior Cadet during his freshman year of JROTC. He is now First Sergeant. As a member of JROTC, he participates in both Raider and Drill teams. Being on homecoming court is important to him because he shows school spirit by representing his class. He, he would like to thank Colonel Selvey for being a great instructor, teaching him leadership skills and self-discipline. Our junior male attendant is Miss Ella Swain. Ella is an honor student maintains a 4.0 GPA and a Fed County Spelling Bee participant. She is a varsity cheerleader and a tech leader for the Oak Hill, Oak Hill Outreach Team. Being on homecoming court is important to her because she gets to represent her junior class. She would like to thank her cheer coach, Ms. Danielle Crouch, for always seeing her potential and pushing her to be her best. Presenting her her flowers this evening is cheerleader Addison Salvatore. Escorting Ella tonight is our junior male attendant, Mr. Tyler Ashmore. Tyler is an honor student, maintains a 4.0 GPA, and has artwork featured at the Tamarack. He is also a member of the varsity football and track teams. Being on homecoming court is important to Tyler because it is something that he may only experience once. It's good to represent his school. He would like to thank Ms. Kirk for always having a positive attitude and making every day a little better. Our first candidate for homecoming queen is Miss Alyssa Hickenbotham. <laughs> Alyssa, 
Alyssa is an honor student who has maintained a 4.0 GPA throughout high school and enjoys high school much more than one probably should. She is a four-year member of the student council, volleyball, and track teams. Alyssa says being on homecoming court is important to her because she loves her school and she loves being involved in all school sport spirit activities. She would like to thank Ms. Kirk for inspiring her and reminding her of the kindness every human is capable of. Her future is to attend Marshall University and earn a degree in secondary education to later return and teach at Oak Hill High School. Her flowers this evening are being presented by cheerleader Gracelyn Tabbitt. Escorting Alyssa tonight is our first candidate for homecoming king, Mr. Braxton Keffer. Braxton is a member of the Student Active Response Team, the football team, and National Honor Society. Being on homecoming court is important to him because he can create a memory of all of his Oak Hill High School experience and show others that he is proud to be a Red Devil. He would also like to thank Miss Rosetta for always being the nicest lady in the world and part of the best lunch crew. His future plan is to attend Marshall University and obtain a bachelor's in exercise science and then go on to osteopathic school for radiology. Our second candidate for homecoming queen is Miss Kirst I'm sorry, Miss Kristen Hudson. Kristen is a member of Grace Baptist Church, National Honor Society, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and will be a four-year completer of the aerospace program. Being on homecoming court is important to her because she is representing her class and can make memories. She would like to thank Ms. Higg for giving her motivational speeches that help her to start her day. Kristen's future plan is to attend college and become an ultrasound tech. Her flowers are being presented this evening by cheerleader Jayla Lynch. Escorting Kristen tonight is our second candidate for homecoming king, Mr. Jackson Foster. Jackson is the Mr. Cool Guy, and if you know, then you know. And proudly, he is OSHA certified. He is a member of the HVAC program for FIT, Skills USA, USA team, member of Grace Baptist Church, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Being on homecoming court is important to him because it's important to represent his school and to make good memories to look back on. He would like to thank Ms. Kirk for always being supportive and Mr. Adams for his dad jokes. His future plan is to become a mailman. The final candidate for homecoming queen is Miss Audra McDonald. Audra will be a four year completer of the aerospace engineering program. She is a member of the National Honor Society and attended the West Virginia Governor's School for the Arts. Audra is also a member of the Oak Hill Methodist United Methodist Church and a company dancer with Beckley Dance Theater School, where she danced the lead role of Clara in the 2022 performance of The Nutcracker. Being on homecoming court is important to Audra because it is an honor to represent the Oak Hill High School senior class of 2024. She would like to thank Mr. Kent for always making his history class fun and interesting. Her future plan is to attend WVU and major in hospital administration. Later, she would like to attend law school. Audra's flowers are being presented this evening by cheerleader and best friend, Gretchen Dunlap. Escorting Audra tonight is our final candidate for King, Mr. Malachi Lewis. Malachi will be a two-year completer of the electrician program at Votec and a four-year member of both varsity football and basketball teams. 
Being on homecoming court is important to him because it's an honor to be chosen by his fellow classmates as a representative and to escort his girlfriend, Miss Audra McDonald. He would also like to thank Monty Wright for always being so supportive and helping to work on his game. His future plan is to attend college and major in sports management. Thank you to all of our attendants and family members for coming out to support this event this evening. This is your 2023 homecoming court. At this time, it is my pleasure to announce our 2023 homecoming king, Mr. Malachi Lewis. <laughs> Crowning the king is Mrs. Hayes. Our 2022 king from last year, Mr. Ethan Vargo Thomas, was unable to attend. He is traveling with the Fairmont State football team tonight. At this time, it is my pleasure to announce the 2023 homecoming queen, Miss Alyssa Hickenbotham. Crowning our queen tonight is the 2022 queen, Ms. Kalila Haynes. Congratulations to everyone on the court. We are proud of each and every one of you guys. As the court is being uh, photographed, I would also like to take a moment to recognize our alumni from the different schools that make up the one family that we are today. If you are alumni from Fedville High School, please stand. If you are alumni from Mount Hope High School, please stand. If you are alumni from Valley High School, please stand. If you are alumni from Collins High School, please stand. And if you are alumni from Oak Hill High School, please stand. Together, we are stronger. Also, I think we are ready to announce the float winners for tonight. I know this is something that all the kids are waiting to hear. In fourth place for the floats tonight is the freshman class. Coming in third place for the floats tonight is our sophomore class. Coming in second place for the floats tonight is our senior class. And that leaves the number one spot to our juniors.
Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back in to Oak Hill High School Football here in the New Network. We just completed our halftime homecoming festivities. We'd like to send our congratulations to the homecoming court, all of the representatives, and, of course, the homecoming king and queen. But, Chris Rader, we have ourselves an excellent football game on our hands. 13-7 Oak Hill with the lead. It's been a contrasting of styles so far, but I think Oak Hill's style has had the upper hand so far, not just because of the scoreboard, but they've handled Buchanan up to really well. Yeah, they've done a they've done a pretty solid job overall. Buchanan, I mean, they did string together two nice drives. One ended in a touchdown. One ended down here around the goal line. Uh, they missed a field goal. Uh, Oak Hills made their made their chunk plays through the air. Buchanan, no chunk plays, just very methodical, moving it on the ground. And again, that's something we could, we thought that we would see coming in, and we'll see how that plays out here in the second half. But yeah, we got a good one, thirteen to seven. Oak Hill. Going to get the ball here in the second half, so hopefully they can put together a drive and get up here by a couple possessions because if they do that, now you're really putting Buchanan behind the eight ball. They they can't afford to be behind two possessions with the kind of offense that they've got. They're not a team that plays well from behind. No, I think not we've at all. well established that. I was looking at some of the interesting stats here. We talked about this being a 13-7 game. The average score of this game is 17-14 Buchanan Upshur. They actually lead the all-time series 7-4. The last time they played, it was 27-7. Oak Hill went up there and got the win last year. But the last time they played here, the highest scoring game, 41-27. Buchanan Upshur came in here and beat Oak Hill. So traditionally, this is a close game, and it's shaping up to be that way again this, this year. I can tell you, this goes back 30 years, not that it means anything, but I played in three of these games against Buchanan. They were all low-scoring affairs, 16-6, to 8-6. Eight, eight to six. I, My mind's getting away from me, but yeah, they were all low-scoring affairs. So, yeah, this is typically kind of a hard-fought slugfest when Oak Hill and Buchanan get together. We anticipate that again tonight, and I'll tell you what, if it's anything like the first half, we are in for a treat in the second half, that is for sure. Lucas, while we have a second, I, I got a couple of scores here from around the state that might be of interest to some of our viewers tonight. Now, this is a matchup between a past Oak Hill opponent and a future Oak Hill opponent, Princeton and Woodrow Wilson. And that was a close game for a while. Princeton has now pulled away to a 28-7 lead over the Flying Eagles in what is probably considered the uh, the game of the night in the state in AAA. Cabell Midland and Hurricane. Cabell Midland comes in 7-0, ranked number one in the state. Hurricane comes in 5-1, uh, and one, rank number 3, and at halftime, that's a good game down there. Hurricane with a 21-14 lead over the number one team in the state, Cabell Midland. Uh, Independence is all over uh, number two man in single A, 31 to nothing. 
Greenbrier West, the number four team in single A. It's a local team. They're all over Petersburg, 27 to nothing. They're coming off a big win over James Monroe last week. And then speaking of James Monroe, they're playing number 14 Midland Trail tonight, and they're handling their business 28 to nothing over the Patriots at halftime. We'll be back with Ming Weather after this <laughs> after all those score updates. All right, we're about to get this thing underway. The second half, Buchanan Lubsher again in those white helmets, white pants with the blue numbers, blue pants. So kill all black tonight. Buchanan Lubsher will be kicking off from left to right on your screen. It's about to get the second half underway here from John P. Duda Stadium. Kick is... I would say in the air, but it's more like on the ground. It's going to go out of bounds, so you can't do that, and that's going to give O'Kill kill pretty good field position to start out. Yeah, nobody's threatening for the Lou Groza Award tonight in some of the kicking games that we've seen. No, 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 <laughs> although, although, and we appear, they just put a foot golf course in at the Fayette County Park. The way these kickers are lobbing it in there, they might want to start playing that sure. course. Never played that before. I've wanted to. I have never gotten around to it, but I think I'm i not good at disc golf, but I think I'd be halfway decent at foot golf. So we'll congratulate Malachi Lewis. He was crowned the homecoming king at halftime. He's living his best life. Quarterback of the football team, best player on the basketball team, homecoming king. He's, he's living his Zach Morris life. Amen to that. Speaking of Malachi, he'll bring his team to the line. He's got two receivers to each side and a single setback. That back is J.D. Moritz. He gets the handoff, and he gets stuffed. You don't see that very often with J.D. No, you really don't. Nice job that time from Buchanan. I want to give the credit to number 50. That's Blake Runyon. He's a 5'10", 231-pound senior, and he did. He sure stuffed J.D. that time. Saw something a little different that time from Oak Hill. They had twin receivers, but they stocked them. Well, I I don't think we've seen that tonight. Sometimes you're able to get a better release off the line of scrimmage if you do that. They've got two receivers with side, but not stacked. Hand off again, goes to J.D., tries to find the outside. He will find the outside. He'll find the 45-50 across the 45-yard line. Big play there for Oak Hill. Nice. And that, that was all J.D., too. Buck Cannon had that completely stuffed. I thought that was going to be another no-gainer or maybe even a loss of a yard or two. And J.D. just slipped through a couple of tackles. That was a great individual effort that time by J.D. Made he, something out of nothing. And he gets rewarded with the 44-yard line of Buchanan up to first and 10 for the Red Devils. And again, O'Kill coming out in that stacked formation, two to each side. Now handing it off to J.D. again. It's working. He'll cross the 40 to about the 37-yard line. Yeah, two nice runs in a row. So three consecutive handoffs. We'll see if Coach Marion's looking to establish his running game. Looks like he is. And then, again, if he can continue to get uh, runs and chunks like that, then we'll see if we can run a little play action and sneak some receivers back some back behind safeties and start creeping up. Second down and four on the scoreboard. Man comes in motion across the formation. Handoff goes again to J.D. He'll find the hole, and he will cross the 35. I don't think he'll get the 30. Well, maybe. <laughs> He kept, he kept pushing as is his trademark. He just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. He won't get the 30, but he will get a first down. Really good vision that time by, by J.D. He, uh, I think that play was designed to go more toward the left or over the middle. He saw a crease to the right, and he was able to find it and, again, get nice yardage, but really good vision that time. All, all good backs have good vision, and J.D. showed it that time. Three receivers to our near side now. Malachi takes the snap, and he takes himself. And that's going to get a few yards there, not really a ton. I think he got two, and that will call second and eight. Yeah, design. we haven't seen a lot of design QB runs tonight for Oak Hill. I think the most I've seen this year was against Prince, and they had a lot, ton of design runs. Not as many tonight. And Buchanan had that pretty well defended. They tried to use J.D. as a lead blocker that time, but the Buccaneers were kind of all over that. Yeah, I don't think that front with the uh, big human flesh there there is a good spot for a quarterback run a whole lot. There's a screen pass. Spalding caught it and didn't really go anywhere, but flags come in. Nice play that time. Buchanan defended that pretty well. Number 25, that's Wyatt Morris, 6-foot, 168-pound junior, and he was able to 
bring down Spalding for, for no gain. Nice play. And we're going to tack on a holding on top of that. So what was an ISO kill drive now is definitely going to get halted. Yeah, that'll bring up third down and long. We'll wait for the yardage. But they're third and 17 on the scoreboard. We talked about this for both teams, but it's relevant here, obviously. This is not where O'Kill wants to be. Well, nobody really wants to be in, in third and 17. Yeah, you don't have a great play dialed up for that. So we'll see if they can maybe get half of it and try to go for it on fourth down. Stack formation. They'll hand the ball off, and that's not going to go anywhere. Now you're in a tough spot. Yeah, I think Coach Marion was thinking that. Let me get, let me just get some of this back. But Buck Cannon with a nice job that time wasn't didn't allow JD to spring through there. So yeah, you're kind of in no man's land. It's fourth and long. Yeah, that's that's going to be tough to get. It's too long for a field goal. Probably too short for a punt. So maybe you just let Malachi throw it toward the end zone here. If Buck Cannon picks it off, it's as good as a punt. We'll see what see what Coach Marion has dialed up here. Tough spot. Indeed, Bring it is. The snap is back. Malachi escapes. Tries to find a man downfield. Doesn't. He will get back past the original line of scrimmage, but he won't get the first down. So Buchanan up here will take over on downs with 8 11 to go on a rolling clock. Yeah, again, O'Keel had a nice little drive going, but then the holding call really put him behind the sticks. They weren't able to do anything from there. So nice job by Buchanan's defense. So. They were able to keep Oak Hill from scoring. They keep it a one-possession game, and now they bring up, bring out their big behemoths, and hopefully, and they're hoping that they can just put together a methodical drive and get back in this game. So we'll see what comes of it. We might have had our downs wrong there, Lucas. I think that might have been a third, third okay, down play right fourth. there. Yeah, oh, right. Well, they, it, was, it was wrong on the scoreboard, and that's. Incomplete. Can, oh, man, incomplete. Okay, so now Buchanan Archer takes over. Yeah, we apologize. I, I think on the penalty, the, they didn't change the scoreboard over, so we were going by the scoreboard, and they had that as a third down, then a fourth down, and I guess we were down behind them, or down ahead of them, as it were. But regardless, yeah, Buchanan with a nice defensive stop, and they get the ball back here. And yeah, we do apologize for that. We're back on track now. So now you're Buchanan, and... 7.30 left to go in this uh, in this third quarter, and they like to eat up as much as they can of that. Missed the snap. Handoff up the middle. Bouncing around, trying to find space. It's not there. This shot of the 30. Nice job by O'Kill. Buchanan tried to run a little counter that time. There were several O'Kill defenders who kind of sniffed that out. I think it was Adam Long who finally came up with the tackle. I saw Malachi come flying through there. He missed it, but... Uh, Oak Hill kind of had that snuffed out pretty good. So maybe maybe a gain of two. Second down and eight, they'll say. And so will we. But the electronic down marker coming in nicely from the far side of the field. Yeah, that's that's nice. It's nice that be able yeah, to see that. Yeah. Yeah. We should have read that and said the school board earlier. Oh, well, here we go. Second and eight. From the eye formation, they'll hand it off. Nothing doing there. Yeah, and it looks like they kind of tried to run the same play that time. And I think that was Mikey Spike who came in from his outside linebacker position who just completely shut that down. Again, they tried to run a little counter. No kill was all over it. Nice play. So, and again, if you're Buck Hannon, you don't want to be in third and eight. No. They're not, they don't want to live like that. That's not how this team is designed to, do, is designed to play football. Third down eight from the 29-yard line. Of themselves, Buchanan up Drew will take the snap. It's a pass, a rollout to the far side, and that pass is going to be. It's almost picked in, off. Almost picked off, and I think they're going to rule. Did they rule that incomplete? They did. In fact, Zuliani had to kind of become the defensive back that time. I, I couldn't tell if that was Mikey Spike or uh, Malachi over there, but they almost picked that off. And again, we've seen. But Cannon do that now several times to either side of the field where they roll the quarterback out and they have a receiver at three different levels. They have a back in the flat. They have a tight end kind of in the middle level there, and then they send somebody deep to try to hit the tight end, but O'Kill was all over it. Punt formation for the Cannon. Got so it that, that time. Blocked. That was Mikey Spike. I, I said in the first half, he almost had one in the first half, and then 
that time he was able to get his hands on one. So he came flying in there, Mikey Spike with a big play on special teams. Let's see if Oak Hill can turn that into points now. This is one of those spots where you hate to say it with 5.54 to go in the, in the third quarter, but the game really could turn and lean towards being decided on this drive. Oh, yeah. What that, Buck Cannon, they, they can't go down two scores. They're in trouble if they go down two scores. They get out of what they like to do, which is, you know, be methodical and run the ball and, and chew clock. When you're down two touchdowns, that's much harder to do. So Oak Hill really needs to score here. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side, Malachi Lewis. Back there, he'll take the snap, and he'll throw, and that pass is intercepted. And we go right back to where we were at the beginning of the game. A flag comes in late, and I mean very late. That was a big hit by Bryson Johnston, who was able to jar that ball. I think that I couldn't tell if that was Spock or Spalding, but Johnston laid a big hit on him to jar it loose. And the kid that came up with the interception for Buck Cannon, I believe, was Colton Welding, a six foot, 166 pound junior. He was able to get it off the ricochet. It looked like Spack to me. Now we're going to have a face mask, I guess, on the tackles. That's going to give Buck Cannon a free 15. And big play for the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. they, they had their backs against the wall. They come up with a big turnover. They have some momentum now. And so we've remained 13 7. It's almost as if you can wipe that block punt off the board. Yeah, big play. Big play for Buchanan. Again, big hit from Bryston Johnston. We've seen big hits and good catches in this game. This has been an entertaining game on many fronts. You know, they, they threw a flag. I never saw them walk off yardage, though. Yeah, I didn't either. That's, that's strange. That's, strange yeah. that's, that's where the kid went down. Yeah. We'll take it, though, from the 25. Pitch comes to the near side, and he'll dive forward to about the 28. But, yeah, I, I was with you. I kept waiting for them to walk off the yardage, and they didn't do it. Yeah, never never marked off the penalty yardage, which was strange. So that, I, I don't think we've seen a tall sweep. They tried a tall sweep to the right-hand side that time. That was uh, Isaiah Conley and Adam Long in there. Not a lot, and I and I got to think that's, that's probably playing into Oak Hill's hands. You probably want to go north-south with your size advantage, not so much east-west. 5-13 to go in the third third quarter. Man comes in motion, it's your boy, and he'll block for a run, and that went nowhere. Yeah, Oak Hill is really, I mean, they're not they are not respecting Buchanan's ability to throw the ball, even though Buchanan's hit a few passes on him. Oak Hill is really playing that run. And again, Buchanan now on a third and long. So nice job from the Devils on the first two downs to put Buchanan in a situation they don't want to be in. To your point, Chris, they haven't done it a lot, but when they've thrown it, they've completed, they've got chunks of yards. Yeah, they have. They've, they've made some plays in the past game tonight. So you got Zuliani out here who's made some nice catches tonight on the far right. Snap comes back. They'll look his way, and that pass is nearly intercepted. It got tipped twice. It was there. That was actually – he threw it in traffic, but they, they wanted that slant, and it was there. Aaron Higginbotham tried to undercut that, but he put it right on Zuliani's hands, and Zuliani just couldn't hang on to it. So, nice stand for Oak Hill. But they, they did what they wanted to do, and that's – if you're going to throw the ball for Buckhannon, I, I think that's your best option is to throw it to those big guys on those slants. Point formation for the Buccaneers here. And that's oh, a high wow. snap, and I don't know how he got that I off. don't either. I don't know how he got that off. you got to be careful here. It's going to take an Oak Hill bounce. I thought for about sure the that that was getting ready to get blocked. I was trying to see who came flying in there. That might have been Jazeer Battle who came flying in there, and I thought for sure that he was going to swallow that up. And first of all, great job by the Buck Cannon punter to even handle that snap. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a great one-handed catch to even get that off. That could have been disaster for the Buccaneers. So really nice job by the punter. I, I'm sorry I didn't get his name or number. We'll have to look for that. But he really saved the Buccaneers some big yards that time by even coming down with the snap and getting the kickoff. That might be the biggest play of the night for Buck Big I'm play. Sure. And just across midfield, Oak Hill will start the drive off. J.D. Moritz will dive through, and he'll get the 40-yard line. Yeah, J.D.'s getting lathered up a little bit. That's that's a good, so, solid seven or eight-yard run. He's had some good runs here in the early second half. 
Let's see if Coach Marion tries to just keep it on the ground here and choose some clock himself. Beat Buck Cannon at their own game. We're under four minutes to go in the third quarter. It seems, for, it seems like the quarter has flown by. Yeah, it really has. Two receivers to each side for Oak Hill. And a bunch of movement, and I think it's going to be a free five. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll be a free first down for the Devils. We've seen that several times this year, too, where, and again, we can't hear it, but you have to wonder, you know, I think Malachi's probably doing a pretty good job with his voice inflection. We've seen many times this year him able to get defenses to jump and get free yardage out of it. That's will kill up rather nicely with the ball resting on, let's say, the 35 and a half. Here's the snap. Handoff, J.D. Moritz. You're trying to get the edge. He will get the edge, and he'll dive forward to about the 26. So if you grew up in the 80s like I did, the Redskins used to run a counter tray. They used to do it with John Riggins. They pull a guard and a tackle, and that's exactly what Oak Hill did that time. They pulled their right guard and right tackle, and that was the old counter tray, and J uh, J.D. was able to run behind that and get some really solid yardage, but that's a that's homage to the Hogs from back in the 80s with John Riggins. Here's the snap once again. Malachi will keep it, and he'll dive forward across the, right on the 20-yard line, actually. So... <laughs> I think Malachi tried to slide there. He's a really good athlete, but I, I can tell he doesn't play a lot of baseball. That, that wasn't <laughs> no, no, that wasn't no, the, you, the you, most graceful slide. He does a lot of stuff gracefully. He's a really good athlete, but uh, he's trying to protect himself. And uh, again, they've been establishing JD. That time they were, he fooled him. You know, he pulled it out of JD's belly. So again, that's good play calling right there well, to set can, that up. If he can find some time in his busy schedule, the baseball playoffs, or I might want to watch a game or two and figure out how to slide in that one. Did it again. He got another free five out of Buck Cannon. So again, that that to me, I would think that's planned. That's something they've probably talked about in, at halftime. We're like, let's change up the snap count a little bit mm -hmm. and it's working. So that'll be a Three five, and it'll be second down and a yard. That's really good coaching too. That's something little that you don't think about, but just changing the snap count. Now the defense is kind of on their heels a little bit because they don't know when the uh, Oak Hill's going to snap the ball. Well, they snap it here and they hand it off to JD. He'll get a first down and then some. He's thinking six, and he's got it. Touchdown, Oak Hill. Really nice job that time. JD just put his hand on the right hip of the pulling tackle that time. I think that, ah, give me a second. I want to make sure. Desmond, Mike, I thought that was Desmond, 6'5". I don't know how I can mistake Desmond for anybody else. 6'5", 295. He's about our closest answer to, uh, to Ryan Kelly, but J.D. put his hand on Desmond's hip, and Desmond just let him right up in the hole. And Oak Hill's really establishing their run game now here in the second half, Lucas. And just what we talked about Oak Hill needed to do, they do. Jackson Pino's on to make it a two-score game. And he does. 27 Oak Hill has the lead. We shot with him on the network right after this. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back into Nerva Network's coverage of high school football. And I take this time to thank Raynell Medical Center for sponsoring this game here tonight. We couldn't do it without the sponsorship of fine organizations such as that. And Chris Rader, we talked about how Buchanan Lumpster is not built to go down two scores. We'll go down two scores, and we'll see what they have cooked up here on offense, needing something on this drive, to say the very least. Yeah, when you're, when you're down a couple scores, now it's harder to, to try to go down the field three and four yards at a time. You have to have more of a sense of urgency and... That's not by Cannon's forte, so we'll see what happens from here on out. Jackson Pino puts the ball in the air, and that's a really good 
kick, and I think it's going to go inside the five. We'll see if they try to return him. They do, and Big that hit. was not. I had him long. I think I would let that go. Well, he brought the wood on that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Good football player. I think I really think that they caught Buchanan with their pants down a little bit. Jackson has been squibbing everything, and then all of a sudden he puts that down around the ten yard line, and you uh, and you could tell Buchanan wasn't expecting it. I'll be honest with you. I really would let that one go. Just no, if no, no other reason than self-preservation. Save the hit. Well, I wonder what the – so once the ball hits the ground, because I don't know if that was going to go in the end zone or not from the 10. So that's – that was just a well-placed kick, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Here we go. Hand off up the middle. And I don't gain a solid gain there on first down. Yeah, that was a nice that was a nice pickup. He was able to keep his legs churning and get a solid five or six yards that time. Looks like we have an injured red devil. I think that's Isaiah Conley. Yep. Comes up. He might be cramping. He's hobbling a little bit. Really an unusually warm night here. This is a beautiful night, especially for for mid October when it start, can start get kind of chilly. I'm up here in my shirt sleeves. This is a great night. Yeah, it's going to be on the, in the 40s on Monday when rainy. So well, yeah, I mean, you had, to, you had to rain on my parade, didn't you? <laughs> I told you to be back with May weather at some point now, didn't I? October's, October's going to rear its ugly head. I guess we'll enjoy it while it's here then. Exactly, exactly. I, you can't say I'm raining on your parade too much. we got a 20-7 lead. 40, 40 seconds, Randy. 40. And McCann loves you here with two guys on this side of the formation. And that was interesting. When they've been in that formation, they've always brought your boy across the formation, and they didn't that time. That was different. A little bit of a change up there. Yeah, they brought Zuli. I mean, they've, they've switched it up some. They'll bring Zuliani in motion. Sometimes I'll keep him... At a, at a split in or flanker position, depending on where he's lined up. They are very basic on offense, very basic. They do not show you any different formations. Everything they do is is really basic. They don't – they stick to what they know. Zuliani is down on the near side of the field. In live formation, once again, the Buccaneers, though, drop back to pass to try to find Zuliani. That pass is dropped. I don't know how he dropped that. Oh, don't call that. I, that's so Aaron Higgin. So they tried to run that slant. Aaron Higginbotham tried to undercut it the play before and didn't quite get there. That time he did undercut it and had the interception and he dropped it. And out of frustration, he he kind of throws the ball on the ground. I that that's cheap. that to me is a little ticky tack. I don't love that. And that actually gives Buchanan. A free, first a free yeah. first down. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't love it. I, I didn't think he did anything too demonstrative there. I just out of frustration, right, like where he just kind of slams the yeah. ball down on the turf because he knew he dropped an easy pick, and I don't know. What are you supposed to do? Show it. no emotion? Yeah, I, it's I, a I don't, high school football. I don't game. love the call. It gives Buchanan a free first down. Yep, and they'll Good take call. that. They'll take that every day. Zuliani appears to be on the far side of the field. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle, and that's a first down again. So Buchanan getting chunk plays now. Yeah, nice job over the left side. They were able to pick up solid yardage that time. Adam Long in on the tackle. Now, Elijah Gray's helmet came off, so he's going to have to come out. He looks like he might be shaking up a little bit too. A little bit. So it looks like Spalding's going to check into the game for Elijah Gray as he comes out. One minute to go in the third quarter. Buchanan Upshur on the move, trying to get this back to a one-score game. Here's the snap. Running play, and he'll dive forward for about a three-yard gain. Solid gain on first down. That's actually a really good run. I thought O'Kill was going to have that stacked up um, for no gain. And Morris is able to keep his legs churning. He looked like a miniature J.D. Burritz that time. He, he finished the run. And Buchanan Upshur with not a whole lot of urgency here with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter, man. I, I, I think I'd be going a little bit faster here. Yeah, Just they a little bit. They don't get in a hurry regardless of game situation. Here's the snap. Pitch to the far side. Now it's the 50. 
And he won't have the first down, but we will have the end of the third quarter here. The clock ticks down and hits zeros. Three quarters in the books, one more to go. We have a good one. 27 0 kill at the lead. We will return on the Nerva Network right after this. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7 30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back into New River Network's coverage of high school football here. We are in the fourth quarter. 20 to 7, O kill with the lead, but can up with a big third and one. It's four down territory, but still, you don't want to put yourself in a fourth down situation at any time. No, they, they broke off a couple of nice runs after that penalty, so yeah, they're definitely four down territory here. Bring a man in motion across the formation and they hand the ball off, they will get a first down. And again, they, they brought the slot. That time they brought Bryson Johnston in motion. And we've seen several times once they bring motion across the formation, they'll follow that motion into the hole. That time they didn't, a little inside handoff to the fullback on the other side of the line, able to get three or four yards and pick up the first down to keep their drive alive. In the 43-yard line of the Red Devils, the Buccaneers, Break their huddle. Center comes to the line first, as always, takes hold of the ball. Giuliani, the man of the hour, it seems like, for Buchanan Upshur, on the, on the near side of the field. Here's a pass. And he picked it off. Interception. Al Kyle Lewis. 25. He's gone. Touchdown. Oh, kill. Well, Lucas, you know, Buckhannis just, they, they've shown that same look all night. They'll, they'll come out in a little half roll, and I've mentioned that they'll have a receiver on three different levels, and you can only show that so much before Oak Hill's going to sniff it out. Malachi was all over it. Really good football instincts, good football IQ, and he stepped right in front of that and took it to the house. Is it me or does it feel like that was coming, just simply because of the fact that they've had so many interceptions that have been dropped Well, tonight? what I'm saying, and I've mentioned this tonight, Buck Cannon is really basic in, in everything that they do. So we, we saw Aaron Higginbotham undercut. They, 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 they kept running the quick slants. Or they kept running those quick slants. Aaron Higginbotham undercut that one and should have had a pick. And so then that time they roll out to the – flat and again they're, they're, you can you show that look so many times and O'Kill's eventually going to jump on it. Jackson Pino is on to attempt the extra points. Snap is back. Kick is up. It's on the way. And that kick is good. So the same exact score as last year's game. 26 27-7. O'Kill has the lead here. We will be back on the New River Network right after this. Welcome back at the New River Network's coverage of high school football. Here we'd like to take our moment to thank our game sponsor for tonight, Rainell Medical Center. I've said it all night, but it remains true. We could not do this without the kind sponsorship of local businesses. Support local businesses. 
I'm please. a big fan of Raynell Medical Center. I bet you are. I am a big fan <laughs> of Raynell Medical. Yes, please support Raynell Medical Center. Back to uh, Matters in Oak Hill. It's a 27 to seven lead for the Red Devils. Here, 11 13 to go in the contest, and man, this is. It's Mount Everest for Buckhannon Lupshire, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're they're really behind the eight ball now. And, oh, man. Oh, man. I Just lost his footing that time. Yeah, what else can you say? What else can you say? It was number 22. That was Daniel Hedrick. He's their fullback. And he had a little room. He just got a little ahead of himself that time. But, yeah, now you got Buckhannon in a bad spot, down three scores, 11 minutes left. And again, they're, when they do try to put the ball up, I mean, it's kind of the same two or three formations, route combinations, and it looks like Oak Hill is really starting to sniff those out. And that familiar eye formation, here's a handoff up the middle, and that's going to be a, a solid game, but ain't the, time, ain't the time for solid gains anymore. Yeah, Oak Hill's probably willing to give up four or five yards here and there, and, and again, Buchanan doesn't, they don't really go fast. They they huddle. They're very methodical. They take their time. But uh, and this isn't the time you want to take your time. You got to have more of a sense of urgency. We're already at 10:40 to go in the fourth quarter. Here's the handoff. And going nowhere that time, losing a good bit of yardage there. That was Braden Knight. 6-3-320 and Really nice play from Braden that time. Again, it looks like Oak Hill is trying to match beef with beef as much as they can. I see Desmond Mike out there. I see Colton Naylor out there. I see Braden Knight out there. So they're trying to offset some of that beef Buchanan has with their own. And Braden made a really nice play in the backfield that time. We talked about Buchanan's beef, and yeah, they've got some big, but they've got some big gains, and they've had some chunks. But Oak Hill has really done well against bigger guys. They've seemingly done that all year where they've gone up against bigger offensive lines. They've helped more than held their own. Well, they've, they've really, that's, they've done that the last couple of years. Oak Hill, they, Oak Hill feels like that their strength on defense is their fast athletic linebackers. Uh, guys like Adam Long and Mikey Spike and Aaron Higginbotham. And they're not real big kids, but they're good athletes. They can avoid blocks. And they can, they can really get out in space, and they're shore tacklers. So, yeah, Oak Hill's been a strong defensive team the last couple of years without really having a lot of beef up front. Although, when I'm looking out there right now, they do have some beef up front with those three guys. Yeah, they do. We're under 10 minutes to play in our ball game. The King Nubbish faces the third and long here. They bring a man in motion across the formation. It's Zuliani. I thought Zuliani. And I think they're going to try the passing of the side, and that is just, and I do mean just, out of the reach of the receiver. I thought Zuliani actually cut up field. I'm surprised they didn't throw a flag on him. I thought he was playing Canadian football that time. I thought he was starting up field. He wasn't moving laterally anymore. They let him get away with it. No harm, no foul, I guess. An incomplete pass, and Buchanan looks like they're going to have to punt. 9.44 to go in our game. 27-7, Red Devils with the lead here on homecoming night at Oak Hill High School. Always want to win on homecoming. You want to win a home opener, you want to win a senior night, and you want to win homecoming. Sure do. And Oak Hill is going to return this. Looks like David Spalding back there. He'll nearly get to the 50. We don't know about senior night yet, but they've they won the home opener, and they are winning homecoming. So you're two out of two so far. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got a good good homecoming crowd here tonight, uh, which I always like to see. I saw one of my old teammates. I was walking up uh, the steps before the game, and I saw my buddy Daniel Davis, and he was our center, and he was uh, the defensive end opposite me years ago. He was a good football player. He's a good dude. I saw him and his wife, Jody, and they have a beautiful family. So it's always homecoming, you know, it's the time to see – see old friends like that. So I was happy to see Daniel. I'm sure there's some other people in the stands we just haven't seen. But, uh, yeah, that's what homecoming's all about. I, say, I saw you looking in the stands earlier. Really. I was going to ask you if you saw anyone you knew. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen several people I knew. But Daniel, I haven't seen Daniel in a long time. And he was a good player and a smart guy. And he's was telling me he's living in Soddy Daisy down around Tennessee. So he's doing well. Good for him. Good for him indeed. That's what a drive to be back in Oak Hill tonight. 
Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Man comes in, uh, no man comes in motion. And yep, that's going to be called every time. I thought the receiver moved before the snap of the ball there. I thought that may have been a false start on the I'm receiver. I'm actually wondering if they're going to call offensive pass interference on this. It looks like um, that was number 33 for O'Kill. That was Carson Treadway, the freshman. I thought he. I thought he pushed. Might have pushed the uh, Kennedy. Yeah, they're, they're, that's what I thought. I thought that might have been OPI. You don't see that a lot, but Treadway was trying to get open and create some space, and he pushed the Buckhanna defender right in the back. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I say to stuff I've had all the time. You can't blame him for one to make a play. No, no. You, you can live with effort penalties. What drives you crazy is mental mistakes. First and a country mile for Oak Hill, and they're going to get some of that back. I, uh, think. I, th I think it's going to be actually a false start. Oh, man. So, yeah, yeah, first and 25 becomes first and 30. Well, this is not what Devon Merriam wanted. No, no, you sure sure didn't want this right here. And I tell you what, in first and 30, you know, I'm going to play armchair quarterback with a three-score lead and a team that isn't really explosive offensively. I might just keep this on the ground, I'm gonna, yeah. chew some clock, punt it punt it back to him and live the fight another day. Yeah, basically I'm going to place Martin Day to do something about it. Well, that's a good start heading off to J.D. He'll get some positive yardage there. And I... Oh, I think that was James Green. That's oh, his, sorry, James Green. Yes. That's his first carry of the night. And, uh, boy, he looks fresh. Yeah, he mm -hmm. really nice run by James Green that time. We've seen them break him out in the fourth quarter a few times again, give uh, J.D. a nice little... Uh, Respite over there on the sideline, and James Green, when he comes in, he finds him, he gets yards. Well, he got about half of that back. Yeah, so, he did. Yeah, first and 30 second, now is second, second and 15. 15. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, now you're back, and let's see if we can get this first down. Yeah, it's halfway manageable now. We'll bring him in across the formation. Here's the snap. Hand off. James Green again. Ooh, Whoa, look big at hit. that. I thought that was a face mask coming across him like that. No call. Well, that was a big hit from Chase Hackett, who came up from his uh, safety position. Really nice run from, from James. He's showing a lot of explosiveness. And, uh, you know, we were first and 30, man. They, they picked it up in two plays, yeah. two runs from James Green. So a first down and 10 for the Red Devils here. Some of the crowd wanted a face mask on that, but first down regardless. And James Green with a nice move, and he'll dive forward, avoiding another big hit, and dives forward against positive yardage inbounds. Well, you can tell James looks like he's been chomping at the bit to get in the game, and he is really running hard. Now, they're going to sub him out and put Tyler Ashmore, their third running back in here. And that's a, again, we've talked, that's a nice luxury to have. They have three really solid tailbacks they can give it to. JD's kind of the workhorse, but then you can take him out and still get production out of Ashmore and Green. Second and eight. Hand off of the middle is Tyler Ashmore. He's running with a purpose. He's got a first down. Yeah, and I've, I've said before during our previous broadcast, Tyler doesn't carry the ball a lot, but I swear every time he carries it, he gets really good yardage. He, he makes the most out of his limited opportunities. Malachi Lewis gets his play from the sideline. He'll trot back to his huddle with 7.30 to go. We are officially over the halfway point of our fourth quarter. Excuse me, now I'm thinking, I'm thinking 15-minute quarters. We're not quite there yet. Here's the snap. Quick screen out. And... We're reversing the field, and this is not going to go well. This is not, not a good not No, a good they play. got it out to Carson Treadway. He reversed his field. But Canada just did a really nice job of defending the entire field. They ran east-west with him, and, uh, yeah, they just they, they snuffed it out. A clock winds under seven minutes to go here in the game. No kill with a 27 to 7 lead. It's the exact same score as last year's game in the cannon. And now, if you're O'Kill, there's no need to get in a big curry here. No. Setting on a big three score lead. Second and 13 for the Red Devils. Man comes in motion across the formation. 
And they'll hand the ball off. Good chunk of yardage there out to the 40. It'll be third down and not unmanageable. Yeah, and I'm good. Again, Tyler Ashmore, just a, a really good patient run that time. He waited on the play to develop, waited on his, his blocks to develop, and I like Tyler. Every time Tyler Ashmore gets the ball, he uh, he does something with it. He's, a, he's an impressive back. They're going to say third down and eight for the Red Devils here. And now, with six minutes to go, we are officially over the halfway point of our fourth quarter. Now I'll get that right. <laughs> Here's the snap. It's a pass play. Malachi rolls out, trying to find his man. He does find his man. That'll be a first down for Oakville before being shut out of bounds. Yeah, that was Armani Hicks. We haven't really called his name before tonight, but... Malachi, nice job that time. He was he was in the pocket, didn't get a lot of pressure. He danced out just a little bit, took two or three steps out to his right to buy himself a little time, maybe clear his field of vision. He was able to find Armani sitting in the zone right there. Just nice nice pass play from Oak Hill. 549, frozen after being out of bounds, so the clock will start on the snap. And before we do any of that, we've got a stoppage in play for a false start against Oak Hill. So back it up five. First and 15 now from the 30. Here's the snap. End off to J.D. He'll find the inside. He'll cut back to about the original last game. So he got it back. Yeah. Number 50, Blake Runyon. Also there to help number 20. And this is the time, you know, I've, and I've been in this position. This is the time for Buck Cannon. They see the clock tick and they're down three scores. You really, it's hard to stay motivated at this point. You don't want to give up another score, but you kind of know you're out of the game at this point, too. Mm -hmm. And with 10 seconds, under, under 10 seconds on the play clock, Okil is definitely letting it whine. Here's the snap. Malachi will drop. He will avoid a tackle. He won't avoid a second one as they get in behind the line. That's the first time I think he's been sacked tonight. Yeah, that was Zuliani again. And Zuliani, you know, if you're looking for bright spots for Buck Cannon. Zuliani's been one on mm -hmm. the offensive and defensive side of the ball for the Buccaneers tonight. He's caught several passes. He's made some plays on defense. And I tell you what, Malachi's not an easy guy to, to run down. And he was able to run Malachi down that time for a nice sack. He's a, he's a good player. Third and 20. And you have to wonder just how many plays in that playbook are designed to get you third and 20. I'm not guessing not many. Not a lot. Two receivers to each side, a running back in the backfield. Malachi takes the snap, they'll just hand it off and try to get some of it back. J.D. Moritz fights for it. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage there to about the 25 once again. So they've been back to the original line of scrimmage twice, and they've come back twice. So back I, once. I think we're going to see a field goal attempt, and this is going to be a long one. This is going to be uh, they're bringing Jackson Pino out. This is going to be a... And they're going to set the ball about the 32. What is it about 42 a 42 yard. yarder? 42 yarder. So right in the middle of the field. So Coach Marion is going to let him try to show off his leg here. Now this is a long kick for high school. Snap is back. Kicks on the way. Kick is up and yeah. wide, and I think about a yard short. Yeah, didn't quite didn't quite get there. Good on Coach Marion though. You know you have you have a situation in the game. You're up three scores. You can do that. 338. Why not give him a shot? Yeah, yeah. Kickers don't get a ton of shots. Why not give him one? And if nothing else he learns from it, right? You keep working on the repetition. You get more practice with that special teams. If you need, if you need him late in the game, just ja learn from it. Jackson knows he's got to get on the leg press machine, do some more squats, and build those quads up a little bit more. But Ken Lempshire will take over from about the 20-yard line. And they'll drop back to pass to the flat, well, not really the flat, to the uh, sideline there. And that's incomplete. That's really the first time uh, I've seen them run that route. They have just ran the slants to death. That time they ran a little square out. 
to the sideline that time. It was there. They just they just couldn't connect. But uh, Buchanan has really ran. They've had the same route combinations every time that they've dropped back tonight. That's really the first time I've seen them do something different. It stops the clock. There were 3.35 to go in the game. From the I formation, once again, Buchanan Upster will drop back. It's a quick pass. That's Zuliani, and he will get smothered there. Finally goes to the ground. They will keep the clock running, however. Yeah, and again, we've, we've talked about it tonight. But Keenan just, they don't have any explosive players. They don't, you know, we've seen O'Kill get plays 30, 40 yards in their pass game. But Keenan just doesn't have kids who seem capable of doing that. And everything's methodical. Everything is short and... That's tough to do consistently. Under three minutes now to go in the ball game. McCann and Upshaw with two receivers, two on near side. No one comes in motion, though. They'll throw a screen pass out. And not a whole lot doing there. We'll be forced out of bounds, though. So it'll be a first and 10 here for the Buccaneers. And really at this point, Chris, I mean, we keep saying it, but just run your offense and get out of here. Yeah, a nice win here for tonight for Oak Hill on homecoming. That's going to push them to six and one. Flag comes in and that, that might be, that flag on the near side might win the award for the most airtime of the flag. <laughs> that thing stayed in the air for a while. And it went a total of two yards. So we talked in the pregame that this was really one that Oak Hill needed to get. On paper, it looked like the most winnable of the four you had remaining. This is going to ensure a winning season. It's going to mean, uh, again, you're solidifying a potential playoff spot. This is another triple-A win uh, for the Red Devils. So six and one. Now you're hitting the meat of your schedule. Mm -hmm. You're hitting the meat of your schedule. So Bluefield, Woodrow, University, and uh, Oak Hill's going to have to buckle up because all of those teams are in playoff contention in their respective classes as well. Every game means a ton for them. Absolutely. Carolina. But the Cannon Upshaw next week, they'll continue their tour of the great state of West Virginia. They'll be heading to Grafton next week. How up on you? How up on you? Are you on your Grafton football? Not very. Now I go to Grafton for work. I, I don't know much about Grafton football. Um, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably a decent rival. Buckhannon and Grafton are up there in the north central part of the state together. So I'm thinking, you know, Buckhannon, Grafton, Elkins, that's probably our version of Beckley, Greenbrier East, Oak Hill, something would, like yeah. that. Yeah. But, yeah, to answer your question, not very. No, <laughs> I'm not either. The most no. I can tell you about Grafton is the railroad there. After that, I'm, I'm, I'm useless. Yeah, I can't, I can't even tell you Grafton's school nickname, so – Good luck to the Buccaneers against Grafton. That's all. I'll yeah, leave it at that. Uh, we wish them the best. Hey, here's the thing. We talk about it. After you beat someone, you're cheering for them the whole year. You become their biggest fan. That's exactly right. Yeah, you're exactly right. You become their biggest fan. So we need we need as many points as Buck Cannon can give us. So, yeah, go Bucks. 2-10 to go here in our game. I formation for Buck Cannon up. Sure, okay, it'll look like they bring it and they drop back. And that'll be a run over the middle and gain positive yardage there. Make it second down and uh, let's say two. Yeah, so if two. you're Coach Zach Davis, you want to build off something positive. He wants to get it in the end zone here. Coach Marion obviously doesn't want to end the game like that. He wants to end on his, on his own positive. So we'll see if Oak Hill can keep him out of the end zone here. 143 to go on a rolling clock in the fourth quarter. Cannon Upshur will take the ball handoff, and they will get a first down as a minor rugby scrum breaks out. Adam Long came out of the ball out there with the ball. I think the whistle had already blown though. Yep, they say move the chains. First down and ten for the Buccaneers, and we'll get the chains set up and the clock restarts. There we go. A minute thirty now to go in our game. Snap is back. Pass to the outside. And they both went for it, and no one came down with it. So that'll be an incomplete pass, second and 10 for the Buccaneers. 
Lucas, I'm going to, with my iPad will load here, I'm going to try to find a couple of scores for our future opponents before we leave the air here tonight. Might take it a second. Well, we've got, uh, let's see, 100 seconds to go. No, 80 seconds to go, I'm sorry, in, uh, in the game. And that's a handoff up the middle. That's about the 25-yard line. Clock continues to roll. A minute 11 to go in our contest. Isaiah Conley with a nice tackle right there. He's going to be a good football player. Okay? He's already, I mean, he already is he a, good, is football a good football player. player. But uh, he's just a freshman, but he's 6'3", 185. Under a minute now to go in our game. And that's a handoff up the middle. 45 seconds now. And looks like we've got a stoppage. I don't know what for. Timeout, but can Lubcher is what for. We'll take it with them here. 27 to 7, OQ with the lead, winding down. We're back on the River Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Christ, host of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm inviting you to join me and Dave Gorby every Thursday night at 7.30 here on the New River Network. We have a lot of fun doing this show with a wide variety of guests and topics that we offer, and we think you might enjoy it. So join us here on Thursday nights for the Courtside with Coach Chris Show right here on the New River Network. Welcome back in here, 42 and a half to go in our contest. 27-7-0, okay, with the lead, it's a fourth and four. And that's a flag down on the field. Let's see what this is. I think Desmond Mike could, couldn't resist it. Couldn't resist. I think he jumped a little bit that time. Indeed he did. They're going to say it's a first down and 10 for the Buccaneers. That, as if there was any doubt, barring a turnover, Buchanan Upshaw will end the game with the ball, or a score, I guess, but still. With 42 and a half seconds, we'll see what happens here. In a familiar formation once again, quarterback under center. And they'll drop back to pass, flag is down. And nowhere near as that pass is out of balance. We'll see what this flag is for. And again, it's, it's strange. Buchanan has waited till the end of the game when the game's over to start mixing up route. Con that they ran a post corner that time. I haven't seen them run a post corner the entire night, which, uh, you know, it breaks a tendency. It was a good route. He was there. I don't know what the flag was, but, yeah, that's the first time I've seen him run a post corner tonight. And it and it was there because O'Kill was setting on a post. They've been setting on an in-breaking route, which is all they've ran all night. I didn't see the call, but I know they backed the ball up, so it must have gone against Buchanan Upshur. Close to 15 for the Bucks, 37.1 on a fourth quarter clock. And the stands here are for the either faithfuls or parents at this yeah, point. Yeah, starting to empty out a little bit. But they saw an Oak Hill victory, which is what they came to see. Exactly. Quarterback rolls out. Trying to find his man. He does. Staying in bounds, though. I th yep. They're going to say he was. Progress will stop. They're going to roll the clock and. Looks like now Buchanan Upshur is trying to move with a little bit of urgency here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, down three seconds with uh, three scores with 18 seconds left. It's in the end of the playoff. They do, they're going to clock it. Okay. 11.9 to go in our game. So they're, they're trying their dangest to get in the end zone here before the game ends and end on a positive note. Carrying a positive note into Grafton next week. Yeah. Drag, drag it out for us, but yeah. <laughs> we understand. Snap is back. And that pass will go to the end zone, and that pass is nearly intercepted once again. And with 6.1 to go, and again, this is probably the last shot for Canada Upshur has tonight. 
Yeah. Yeah, again, just just a two man route that time for Buckhanna. They they don't do anything really exotic on offense. I mean, they re- they really don't. Everything is really really basic with them. Basic route. Com- I mean, just like I said, a two two man route combination that time. Fourth down and eight with 6.1. So this is the end of the game, almost certainly, barring a defensive penalty. Three receivers to the to the far side. Or two receivers, I'm sorry. One comes in motion. And... Wow. But I'll tell you what, the last two minutes of this game have been brutal. Uh-huh. Brutal. Penalties and clock stoppages and... Goodness gracious. So let's try this again. Fourth and 13 now. <laughs> so looking ahead the next week, you got Bluefield coming in, which historically has been a huge thorn in Oak Hill's side. I, I don't think this is quite the Bluefield team that they've had in years past, but I still think they're dangerous. They're, they came, they were 3-3 three and three to go to the end zone. And that so pass picked is off, right? picked off. Didn't mean to step on your toes hey. there. Looks like David Spalding. But, yeah, looking ahead the next week, you, you got the Beavers, uh, who they're, they're in playoff contention in double A. They, they were winning last I saw against the team out of Virginia tonight, so they're going to come in 4-3, and three, and it, they're going to be fired up. And historically, that has been a team that has thumped Oak Hill. So, the stretch gets tougher from here on out. You know what? You've been talking about that. Coach Marion has beaten John Price. He's beaten uh, Nicholas County's coach, escapes me at this time. But he's beaten a lot of experienced coaches. Fred Simon is one of the most experienced head coaches in this state. Devon beats him, or rather, O'Kill beats him with Devon at the helm. That's another great feather in Devon's cap right off the bat. Oh, that would be that would be a huge win if they could go down uh well, that's here next that's week. Here. Yeah, yep. That's right. So Bluefield's coming up here. So that would be a huge win if if they could get Bluefield. That's, again, that's always been a team that's given Oak Hill a lot of trouble. I've broadcast some real blowouts of Oak Hill Bluefield games. But I'm expecting a better game next week. I think it's going to be a really competitive game. And, uh, yeah, that'd be a good game for our viewers to, you know, tune in and watch and see if Oak Hill can continue to solidify their playoff positioning. Can't wait to see it. For the second consecutive year, Oak Hill and Buchanan Upshur ends 27 to 7 Red Devils. How how weird is that? Two consecutive years of the it's exact hard to do same that. score. Yeah, it's hard to do hard that. To do that. Well, on behalf of everyone here at the Nervo Network, Darren McGuffin throwing the switches, Chris Rader with me. I am Lucas Berry saying thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week. Good night, everyone.